Would you like to begin or I? There's like no structure. (laughs) Why is Sokka's necklace so thick? (laughs) I'm speechless. Like I, did did you see my face? (laughs) Weak ass bitch Sozin, you little fake ass hoe. We can't be here anymore. We're talking about Appa's sperm. (laughs) We're fucking live, my brothers. This took. It's about time. I really think that. Wait, I did. I, I haven't put my headphones on once this entire studio time. Now, give me one moment. This has been the most trying session yet, and honestly, it's it's saying something. It's just uh. Whoa, whoa, uh, we've come. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, oh, whoa, yeah, yeah. Mm. We're back to, back to Fango Central. Oh, 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 the podcast. And it is 2024. We Fe-bu- started we- a year ago. <laughs> and we're back. And we're back. I don't even know where to start. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Fangirl Central, where, where being, being a fangirl, fangirl is central to, to our identity. identity. I'm Amanda. And I am Amber. We are sisters. We're sisters. And if you haven't been here before, welcome. Uh, welcome. Um, we're just going to ho- go ahead and get into what the hell we're talking about this week. Today, I we are so excited to be back with the topic that we are coming back with. This is one of our joint fandoms. It's one of our top three fandoms individually, I believe. Yes. Um, And it's actually one of the greatest pieces of work of all time. I am not exaggerating. It's tied for my favorite show. I used to say it was my favorite show. It's now tied with Doctor Who because of my recent craze. But these are my two favorite shows. It's and turned into my favorite show because I used to say I had it tied with another thing. This is just my favorite show. It, it is. It's intense. Like, mm-hmm. We have so many notes, it might be a little bit insane. We have notes and we have highlighters. We have hi- notes and highlighters. And from you would probably tell from the title of this episode, it is Avatar The Last Airbender. It's Avatar The Last Airbender. Should we say the theme song? <laughs> <coughs> okay, wait, hold on. Okay, wait, let me get into it. <coughs> me too. One, two, <laughs> one, two, three. Long, Long ago, ago, the four nations, nations lived together in harmony. harmony. Then... Everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Only the Avatar, master of all four elements, could stop them. But when the world needed him most, he vanished. A hundred years passed and my brother and I discovered the new Avatar, an airbender named Aang. And although his airbending skills are great, he has a lot to learn before he's ready to save anyone. But I believe Aang can save the world. Previously on, on Avatar. Avatar. There <laughs> is nothing uh, in the world yee. that can describe my love for this show. For this show. And I'm going to try not to cry during this Same. recording. Listen, sobbing all the way through this rewatch. We, 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 we watched it in 72 hours and I don't think that either of us has, have ever watched it that fast. No. We, we rewatched all three seasons in 72 hours. That's like basically one and a half sittings. It was crazy. Two and a half sittings? Two and a half sittings. And it was nuts. But we only watched like literally, I think, five episodes of the first season, the first night. And then yeah. we literally watched the, all, all of, of season, the rest of season, season one, one and, and half of season two the yes, second day. Yes. And then the the, the 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 hardest part of season two and then season all of season all three. All of season three in one the day. The last day. Like which I think is like it was a the whirlwind. Best episodes of Avatar are like the second half of season two into the third season. You just don't and that's get crazy to do to breathe in those episodes. You just what I realize is that we have never watched it this fast. Mm-hmm. And and also we usually, when we're like together and we're like, let's watch an episode of Avatar, it's usually from season two or three. Yeah. And so, yes, season one is slow and it's a slow burn and they don't have their bending abilities and they don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. And it's like a little slower and not as interesting. But watching the rest of the series with season one as the backstory really sinks 
deep. Yes, it really does. And also watching season one, just playing that, just watching it at this age and after not seeing it for a really, like a while. Like, I guess like four, three years. Because I, wa- I rewatched it in the pandemic, in the quarantine. But too. Yeah. watching season one and heavily knowing what happens in season two and three, because I pretty much know it like the back of my hand at this mm-hmm. point. I was like, this is a lot of plot building, character building, a lot of backstory. And you need it. You need it. You like need it, it makes it richer. It makes it deeper. Mm-hmm. And like, I just, I can't believe as a kid when it was on, because we watched it just for a little backstory. We watched it. We'll get further into it. But we watched it in 2010 when it was on Netflix. Like we watched it all the way through for the first time that year. But as a kid, I remember watching mostly, mostly just like the episodes like one through five, I yeah. guess. And then when it was on TV. But then I have a really random memory of Toph. Me like, too. So like I literally exactly that. I cannot piece together what I saw as a kid. But I remember I a c- glimpse of Zuko with hair too. I would be like, he has hair now. I no, yes, I remember like as a, as yeah, as an older kid when it was, it was on like t- Nick Tune or something, and mm-hmm. I and it was like Zuko and and he had hair, and I was like, that's that's Zuko because mm-hmm. I had such a strange memory of it. Like that's what I'm saying. Like the, the when I the episodes we watched from season one, I just was like, I don't know what's going on. I'm just here because it's on Nickelodeon. And I did not, I could not have imagined the story it was about to tell. No, from it, the, those years. Because the of first my life. five episodes are literally like really, really silly. Mm-hmm. And I was talking about this with my friend Ben, who also loves Avatar. He says he was talking about how silly the first half of season one is, like yeah. before the storm, and like how it can like deter mm-hmm. audiences. But I, on this watch, I used to think that wholeheartedly. Like it's too silly. Like the first five episodes annoyed me actively mm-hmm. as a child because they, they were on all the time. Yeah, those were the only the ones only I saw. only five episodes. Like, I was like, what is And this? I was like, are nothing's people? going on. It's just silly. But now watching it, it's like so obvious that because it's through Aang's perspective, he's a 12-year-old child. All he wants to do is have fun. Mm-hmm. He literally says, when they go to Return to Omashu, he says, we can just ride on this little like mail cart thing and then I promise we can we go can to the go. North Pole. Right. That's the only reason they went to Omashu and he is trying to avoid going to the North Pole at all costs. The The, the reality of the war has not sunken in. Mm-mm. And so it's like, we have to go on that journey with Aang. He is trying yeah. to have fun. That's yes. his only goal. Oh his my goal is gosh. not to defeat the Fire Lord. Until Roku wakes his ass up. Until he says, and bitch. Says, Listen here now. Sozin's Comet is coming. You need to focus. You need to Settle Son. down. Listen. I know you like to the penguins. You're 12. You gotta save the world. Unfortunately, the so the that's your destiny. Unfortunately, you gotta save the world. He, he literally, okay. I will. I wanted to respond about the silliness of the episodes. Oh, oh, It is silly. It is silly, but it's also very dark. Okay? Yes. Now, it's also very dark. Like, those first five episodes are silly as hell, but so incredibly dark because Aang is out of the iceberg. He is the last airbender he is just now finding out that he is the last of his people katara and sokka are from a very depraved village where all of the men are gone Mm -hmm. to war yep sokka is the oldest boy he thinks he needs to take care of all of the village including the adult women um katara Mm -hmm. she can bend a slight percentage and sokka thinks that she's kooky for it yep what else Zuko's all banished from his home. Because his own father scarred him. Scarred him in the in face. The face. Not like the foot or the arm. He blasted or him even in the face. The torso. He blasted his son on his face. On purpose. And we'll get into it, but Ozai is like the biggest loser ever. Like literally, it is so dark. And that's also because it's a kid's show. We I think we forget. It is a kid's show. It deals with adult themes. But you need to ease a child into mm-hmm. the realities of war. Yeah, it's like, like be as clueless as Aang, children. Like there, that's why first half of season one is so silly. It genuinely yeah. is so silly. And then there's like a long stretch of episodes where there's no silliness at the end of season two. Yeah. None at all. No. And it's only reality. It is so stressful. And like that's kind of why I love the headband so much because it brings some silliness back into the show. Mm-hmm. But like we're talking about children at war. Yes. Like that's what this series is and I think it's very relevant and powerful because because of that. And so even though season 1 is my least favorite still mm-hmm. and like when I rewatch the series, I will not go back to season 1 
usually. Yeah. But it's very necessary. It's really necessary and it's like very tear jerking when when I guess even if you if it's the first time you're watching, but like this time I was just crying all over the place. <laughs> I was like <laughs> <laughs> I would look over and Amber was like, <laughs> like just sobbing. Silent stream of tears. Silent sobbing. I cannot speak of the winter solstice part two. That got me in the chest. I was like, he, he okay, we have a structure here and ha- are we going to do the structure? <laughs> Literally like, I don't even know what to go to first. Like, Okay, let's just give us, let's just read our notes. Let's should, just read our notes. Should we should we do the story of how we yes, start? Okay. Let's do that. So something that irritates me is that every time I – what people will be like, what's your favorite show? What's your favorite show? I'll be like Avatar The Last Airbender. And they're always like, oh, I love that show. The movie sucked, didn't it? Mm. And I'm like, that doesn't ex- – why would you – that's not, not what I'm talking about. about. No Did I say that? Talking about it. Did I talk about that? That movie – Did I bring it up? Is not what we're talking about. I'm not talking about that. I don't even – Speak its name. Do not claim. Do not claim the movie. Amber's hat just fell off. <laughs> um, but literally, it's so it pisses me off, especially because the only reason we rewatched the the entire series was because it was the summer that the was movie coming was coming out. We were. I think that's like probably why they put it on Netflix too. Yes. Yes, it had just gotten on Netflix and the movie was coming out that summer of 2010. And we were like, hey, I remember that show. Yeah, we were like, let's watch the rest of it. Yeah, why don't, it's on Netflix. Why don't we just watch Watch all of it? Let's watch all of it. Had we done that together with a show? Like, I don't think we had binged a show together. No, we hadn't. Because Netflix was brand new. Netflix was brand new. We binging was binging shows was not a thing. Yeah, binging shows was like you have to pirate it. Like I would, I watched all of like Doctor Who pirated. I watched all of Merlin pirated. Sherlock but this is pirated. Yeah. Okay. See, 2010. I was in. It was the summer after sixth grade. It was like streaming. I, like For what? I, when I say pirated, I wasn't like torrenting or like downloading things. I was like, fu- I was like, watch this for free, and I was watching. That's how I was watching like Sherlock, Merlin, Doctor Who, Invader Zim, Danny Phantom. Like I would, mm. I binged all those shows by myself. Okay. I before I, Netflix was like a streaming thing. I was not doing that yet. When did you watch Degrassi? It was seventh grade. And this is the so. Summer. What year? You that, tell me what the year was. That was 2011. Okay. See, I had. I was all. I was in my binging. Yeah. You were in. A, you were. It was summer after eighth grade for you. I was still summer after sixth grade. So like, I was still like. Yeah. At that point, I had binged Danny Phantom and Invader Zim because I was like, oh, like these are childhood shows that I want to get back into, and let me just watch uh-huh. all of them. I think. Oh, summer 2010. I was like, getting into Justin Bieber. So that was like on a different vibe. Right. But like, this was the first. Show this is we the first binged show we together. ever watched together because I mean yeah binge together because we grew up watching like obviously all the Disney Channel yeah, shows when together they were when on. they were coming out but like this is the first show that we were like let's lock in sit down and lock in is this like one of the first marathons we had like legitimately it has to be because we were it was summer break we had we didn't have anything else to do nobody has we didn't have marathons before on anything for anything sometimes we would watch like two brats movies in a row or like t- like whatever yeah. like movies but they weren't it's not like a marathon but right. like i feel like that's why it's so significant doubly because it's both of our favorite shows and the, the first, first show that we watched together yeah. and like we are as intense about it as the other one yes and like we, I'm not kidding, locked ourselves in our hot ass playroom it was with so no hot, AC. We the AC breathe. went out every single summer without fail because heat rises mm-hmm. and our playroom was, was on, the, on second the second floor. floor. It was so hot up there. This our, is Memphis, Tennessee in July. Our skin was stuck to the couch and like we were having like literally naps of just dehydration and <laughs> dehydration like why didn't we go downstairs to get some water we were so we were glued to the television we were we so were having a marathon just over and over and over and even then i feel like it took us like five like it took in us all, all summer. like it took us all summer no it don't oh, no yes it did be, because it yes it did because we started in like mid june and then we didn't finish until mid middle july so be, i guess no but o- that's only because i went to film camp i mean i went to dance camp okay it took us in total, probably two weeks. Okay. That because, makes sense. But now listen, this was before Comic-Con. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? We're talking about summers before Comic-Con, which yep. I feel like we haven't really talked about on this podcast. 
Anyways. Yeah, yeah. Like, this was pre-Comic-Con, so it was kind of like fangirls before we knew we were what we were doing. I mean, but, but like, that's just our entire lives. That's Like, true. every single thing we've ever done is fangirl. Disney Channel. We've talked about Disney Channel on here. Like, that was before Comic-Con. And so I'm was Britney so Spears. Stupid. Like. Right. Literally everything. Everything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Comic-Con just, like, we were like, wait. This is a, a hub. Minute. We this found is a, a hub. We found a brick and mortar. Wait a minute. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I can do this in public. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> With other people? But okay, okay, so we watched yes, so we watched it all that summer. We were like hot, we were baking hot. in the heat. At one point Amber fell asleep and I watched The Blue Spirit without you. Mm-hmm. And then you woke up and I was like, You need to watch this. Yeah. I, and I, and then I had you to rewatched it. And I'm pretty sure that's hap- that happened on this one too, that you fell asleep during the blue spirit. I did. And I'll talk about that. Because <laughs> Why is that the one? It's a very important episode. But in one sitting, by that point, it's all at night. There it was just after a storm. I'm tired. You know, it it was a he- it was heavy. Like I feel it's like it heavy. was like you're purging a lot of emotion. Like I'm pretty sure you you sobbed during the storm. Like I would look I over did. and Amber. Like more often than not, Amber was sobbing. I didn't sob until was just hitting after really hard. the viewing. Right, like, Amanda. After it, literally after the viewing, y'all. Okay, and this is just jumping ahead. But after we like binged this entire series, the next day we decided to watch the origin of the Avatar, like from Legend of Korra: The Beginnings, Part One and Part Two, from I think season two. Of Legend yeah, of season two, the Spirit World. And one. something happened, and you just started sobbing. No, what, oh, what this is what triggered me is okay. Amber. Oh, it was me. It, it, it yes, it was you. <laughs> <laughs> because when Rava, the like spirit of light, yes, and energy and order and whatever, yes, okay. when Rava's like, I need to hold the other elements for you because you can't hold them all. Amber literally was like, Oh, so Rava, after they fuse together, is the avatar spirit holding the power from life to life. And that's why they have to master it. They have to master it. it and unlock it. It's always there. It was always there. In every single part. It's like Rava's like, holding it for literally every single life. Like they are all one because Rava is there. And when Aang like unlocks the fire bending and he mm-hmm. and he and he does that big fire blast, it's it was just, like he could always do it. Yes. And then it <laughs> burst into tears. And then I just burst into tears after you said that because I was like, isn't that just something such a metaphor for generational wisdom Mm -hmm. like the way that the way that people i've said this to a lot of my friends like the way that other people believe in reincarnation like i don't necessarily believe in reincarnation like when i die i will reincarnate but i do believe in that same on that same line the power of generational wisdom and like in the same way gener- you carry the generational trauma mm-hmm. of your ancestors, you also carry their wisdom. So yes. when they learn something, they are setting it up for you. Yes, like the next generation might not get everything right as we are not getting everything right versus the past generation, but we did learn some things. And also it's like, it was all, like there's something some so things. powerful and like it was always yours. Yeah. You want, you were reaching for it, you were reaching for it and you wanted it to be yours. You didn't have to reach for it, it was always in you. Mm. Like, oh! That's mm. why I'm obsessed Destiny. with the Avatar, like as a concept. Yes, I love the Avatar. I will go hard for the Avatar. I'm an Avatar fan girl. Yeah, I'm one of those. Pe- I'm one of them girls on Kyoshi Island that would be running after Aang. I'm one of them girls that would be screaming over Aang. Oh my gosh! Speaking of yeah, the Kyoshi girls are Avatar fan girls, but also I didn't. I never noticed this because we always skip Abba's Lost Days. Another time that I was sobbing in this watch, but we always skip Abba's Lost Days because. Who wants to see Appa lost? Who wants to? I cannot deal with sad it's, animals. Yeah, no, it's actually incredibly sad. He's just a giant uh-uh. sad He's cat so sad. curling up in a ball, and I don't like it. Anyways, um, we skipped that episode, but then in this in this watch, Azula go. I noticed that Azula was like, "I'm a top fan girls. girls. <laughs> what are you? I'm a top fan girls. And it's because they have fans, and yeah. Tylee's like, <laughs> "I get it," and I'm like. Oh, you bitch. <laughs> oh, ow! Azula infuriates me. Can Okay, that infuriates me. Azula and Ozai are two of the most infuriating characters on this thing. I will say, Ozai is a loser. Ozai is a loser, but I just unfortunately can't call Azula a loser. She's not. She is uh, not a great person, and she has a lot of flaws, um, and... But she she is intelligent. Are you ta- you're talking about Azula? I'm talking about Azula. 
Yeah, of I mean, she's yeah, intuitive. she's intuitive. I mean, well, she I said that she's a nepo baby for war. Oh. Like literally, <laughs> she has learned to be violent and cruel and unforgiving from her bloodline mm -hmm. and like she's good at it. You know what she, That's why she outwits them at the end of season 2 is because right. she's one step ahead of them all the time. Her like war. they're they're naive yeah. kids. They don't have parents teaching them about how to outsmart the enemy. Right. Azula has the entire power of the Fire Azulon, Nation behind her. So, so, yeah, she has, yeah, she also has like the machines and the, the the literal power, the physical and the mental. But also, I wanted to say this because Azula, this 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 brings me, I wrote in my notes that we need to discuss why Azula has a mental break at the end. Mm. And when I first wrote this down, I was like, is there something else we could have done with that? But then when I was like, like going back through my notes, because I was typing them up, I was like, no, I think that was right. Like, she had a mental break, and I know where it started. Basically, it started when May helped Zuko get across from the Boiling Rock episode. Yeah. Because May goes... You miscalculated. I love Zuko more than I fe fear you. And that literally snapped Azul. Like, that's the, honestly the most, like, kind of uh, unhinged I've heard her voice sound on Wavering. She's like, no, you miscalculated. And, like, literally kind of, like, snapped a little. And it's because she has always valued fear over love. Like, she's yeah. like, I cannot prove anyone in, this wor in, anyone in this world loves me, but I know that they fear me. And so yeah. she thinks that is, like, more powerful than love. Yeah. And... Then she's like, no, I just lost because someone loves someone so much. Mm -hmm. And so that was the beginning of her downfall. It was the beginning of her she downfall. She was like, wait. She locked him up. She locked both May and Ty Lee up. But mm -hmm. like, so May and Ty Lee have each other. Also, like, they get free. Like, yeah, she did miscalculate. And, and, and it was also the first time that she lost. Like, she's never lost. It's the first she's time never, she lost. She's never had anyone have the upper hand on her. And it's because no, she's kept love so far away from her. Mm -hmm. She's kept it at such a distance. Yeah. By choice. She's like, everyone needs to fear me. She bullied Ty Lee into coming back. Well, she saw that her father was more powerful than her mother. Her father had people fear them and her mother had people love her. Mm -hmm. And so we saw what happened to the mother and so, the father has the power. Right. So and she's like, fear equals power and that's the only thing that's valuable in this world which brings me to this is another thing about the beginnings and not actually avatar the last airbender but the nature of the elements like we saw the first avatar came from a firebending town yeah and the firebenders were violent yeah and trying to master nature and trying to fight master, the, spirits. Master the spirits yeah and the spirits. like Literally, there's, there was already a hierarchy going on within the fire city. Yeah, there it was imperial. Mm -hmm. Like there were, they did not value love or kindness. Mm -hmm. They valued power. Yeah, Ver and and like that is like the nature of the the element of fire. Like mm -hmm. it burns people accidentally or on purpose. You're right, and also yeah, that is a good point because yeah, the fire city was living in their own city, whereas the air city was living on the lion turtle. Because they were in harmony with it, they he flew over to the lion turtle. I thought they were. I thought the fire city was. They were also living on the lion turtle. No, he. They were going he to said the edge. Be, they were going to the edge, and he was sitting in that ditch. See, now I'm confused about the orientation because if you look at that lion turtle, there is a city on its back, and he said, "You will never be in this city again." So were they l hopping? <clears throat> off I think they the left. Yeah, turtle? they got off of him. Oh, I don't know. Look. The thing is, though, yeah. that then air nomads were living in harmony with the spirits. Mm -hmm. the, the air nomads. They were, didn't need to they learn didn't, that. No, they didn't need to fight them either. Yeah, yeah. But okay, yes. So yeah, there were already some issues within the fire and line. Mm -hmm. But also, I do, I do want to talk about how fire is not destructive in violence all the time. It's like passion and heart. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't know who, I think- I Life. Think in life. And I think the dragons knew that. Mm -hmm. The people who got their fire from the lion turtle were not really like taught the way of the dragon because- They, they were, were animals. Yeah, they were animals. They were not in harmony with animals. And I just want to tie it back to Azula who- Ha does fear over love and Zuko the weak one like his mother the weak one has so much heart and allegiance mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. while a lot the majority of the show it's misguided and he has no idea who to who to give it to he's ready to give it to someone and he's ready to just he 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 wants to fight for something yeah like for something not against 
And I think it's something to say that the first Avatar was a firebender ever. The first Avatar ever mm-hmm. was a firebender yeah. and was the first firebender mm-hmm. ever. Was he, he wasn't the first firebender. Yes. He, well, they all got fired. They all got fired, the but they all gave it back. Right. So he was And like, then he was the first it. one. He was the first one. He, they remember they said, look, the way that he uses the fire, it's like an extension of his body. Mm-hmm. He was the first firebender. And yeah. he was the first one that knew how to use it in harmony with himself mm. and with nature and the spirits. Yeah. And so there's something to say about how... It's not just black and white. It's not like the Avatar versus the Fire Nation. No, we have to all be in harmony together. And the Fire Nation has been outside of the harmony. Yes, because they think that the, that the other three are irrelevant. They and that's think just, that they're... It's a lot of power. And, and that they're superior. And it's Sozin's fault. It's... <laughs> It's literally, no, it's literally so. I know it's so not the first one to think like this, but what where we are in the show, it's all Sozin's fault because um, he saw that chance to not save his best friend so that he could just conquer all of the other elements, which is honestly insane. Because what do you need that for? What right. do you need that for? Like none of them. That you they- were having a fine little city you were ruling over already. The whole point is that they each balance each other out. Like there's no element, Mm -mm. there's no one element that can like rule the other elements. I wonder what would have happened if they did rebirth the world as the Phoenix or whatever. Like that doesn't even sound right or safe because you saw what happened when they killed the moon. <laughs> when Jao killed the moon. I know, like Jao killed the moon insane. and that was like absolutely insane. And also we are probably going to end up jumping, jumping around. around and like cutting these in two because like we're going to be talking about general topics about the series and then go individually like season by season because there's just too much to cover. Yeah. Yeah. And like, hopefully I'm, this is entertaining to listen to. Yeah, I'm already like overwhelmed. But me too. Like it, it just. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I want to say this. Why is Sokka's necklace so thick? <laughs> this time, <laughs> this time, <laughs> Amber said it. We kept, you kept saying things that I was thinking. Yeah. Like, Amber's like, I don't notice that Sokka's necklace was that thick. Yeah. It's so thick, y'all. It, it's like, it takes up his, almost his almost, entire almost neck. His whole neck. It, it, it's crazy. It's, but I mean, I, th- I guess I just thought it was part of his shirt. But I knew he was wearing a necklace, so I don't know what it is. And on that, Sokka talks about manliness and men and being a man and other men mm-hmm. all the time. All the time he's obsessed with He's that. obsessed with it. And yeah. I understand he was the only man of age in his tribe. His dad left. He has daddy issues. But I said to Amber, I said, what if Sokka were gay? Now, I want to clarify. Gonna I'm going to clarify. What if Sokka were gay and... If what if they turn? What if they made him gay in the live action? Would you be upset? And do you think other people would be upset? And why? Okay, I think duh, people would be upset because we live <laughs> in a world. But <laughs> when she asked me this, I was like, I really wanted to be like, no. But I knew that if I were on a lie detector test, it would be like you're lying because <laughs> no, you wouldn't be upset. Yeah, because I wouldn't be upset that he were gay. Like, I, that's not, that was not, like, it wasn't about the sexuality thing. It was about, I don't want, I don't want to sacrifice the love between him and Kiyoshi. And You mean Suki? Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I was like, well, what about Suki? Like, because I do ship them a lot. I don't care what their sexuality would be, but, like, I need them to be together. Yeah. And then Amanda said, what if he, what if he was trans? Yeah, or is he trans? Is he, tr- yeah. To be, like, I was like, the the uh, just uh, the obsession with manliness and what manhood means and what being a man means mm-hmm. and I'm like what is he gay or like or what if he's trans and I then as that soon would as be I said interesting. and then as soon as I said what or what if he's trans then Amber was like oh that would be fine as long as he ends up with Suki yeah I was I, I just really wanted because it's just really about the ship yeah and the reason why I was held up on the Suki thing was because Suki's identity as a woman is like a whole part of the Kiyoshi Warriors so they would have to use that arc you said that and then I was like and then because of that I was like okay so it's about Suki and it's about that ship yes. because that's a good ship and honestly arguably the only good ship in the show in my opinion in my opinion but, as well but then I was like I think there would be pushback from the straight girls in the fandom and Amber immediately said I don't care about them I wasn't talking about the straight <laughs> girls I <laughs> I'm talking I and I was yes exactly because I that that question isn't even for them no and that's what I mean by like of course people will be mad that's why I've not it's not even a consideration that's, that's why, why I, I didn't my madness wasn't even over anything like that of that, any type of phobia it was because I was thinking very critically actually and that's not and I and I didn't say why I thought people would be mad because I wanted to get your straight opinion 
Mm-hmm. You're not your as a co- not heterosexual yeah. opinion. You're straightforward opinion. Oh, I was like, what, girl? Yes. But yeah, I think that would be very, I think that would be great, honestly, because that's very interesting. I think that's what, a very- if, if, if Sokka were gay or trans and or trans? If Sokka were queer in whatever way, mm-hmm. ended up with Suki still, yeah, it would be interesting. The arc that they have is the most interesting romantic arc of the series. And I think the only good one. Yes. I want to say it would be interesting because it th- th- it would just remove the the need that or the idea that Sokka is just just has a lot of toxic masculinity just because mm-hmm. to a more a storyline that I would rather consume because I've seen a lot of boys grow up with a, to- a lot of toxic mas- I've seen that character trope a lot like this one would just be a more nuanced a nuanced one, one. Now I want to put a pin in the shipping thing. You- <laughs> <laughs> to ask you because I don't I know you haven't I don't think you've seen this because you're just not like in the crazy Twitter fandom spaces mm-hmm. which I advise against. Mm. But there was an article that came out where the showrunner of the live action was like we deleted Sokka's sexism. We thought okay. it what it had no place in a show that comes out in 2024. And then a lot of people were like but that's like a really his big character. part of his character arc. Yeah. Though. Like in realizing that he's being sexist and then the Kyoshi war warriors come in and then he grows from it so why would you delete the like an interesting part of his character mm-hmm. you know where they can delete it from when Toph says you really want to see two little girls fighting out here I have a, actually a list good please unhelpful sexism that they should actually delete from the live action thank you not Sokka's sexism which right. is important to his character arc important to his character true. arc and I want to say that about the toxic mask your eyelashes are really great that mascara it's and bleep that because they did not pay me (laughs) to say that or it's helpful should i not gatekeep it's long comb it's long comb um but i i want to say me saying (laughs) i don't even know what the fuck i just said you said that me saying that it's a tired trope yeah me saying that it's a tired trope does not negate that it is important to Sokka's growth as a character like he does become less sexist as as by the end of the show and i think that is because he is more world traveled, literally, and right. His so mind, therefore, you have to keep it in the his live mind action. opens a lot from being a world traveler too. Not just about sexism, mm-hmm. and also about water magic yes. and spirit stuff. Although not that much. He's not like, that much. oh, you're the avatar. It doesn't count with you. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, bending is science. It's true, and it happens. The spirit world exists. Yeah. But anyway, I also don't want to get too mad about them deleting his sexism before we even see anything. Yeah. Because I, I, one of my pet peeves about fandom stuff is that they release so much before we've even seen it and then everyone gets mad over yes. something. Like, people got mad over the first picture of Ryan Re- Ryan Gosling as Ken. Right. People got, get so mad about everything on Doctor like, Who. You don't, like, you haven't seen, you haven't, you haven't seen, seen it. the rest of the lore and, and the concept. Like, yet. we haven't seen it. I don't, I want to give them the, the benefit of the doubt. However, if they do just completely delete the sexism, there is a lack of, like, yes. potential for his care. Anyway, unhelpful sexism that they actually should delete, not yeah. Sekka Sokka sexism, which is important <laughs> to his character arc. May in the fortune teller ca- calling Katara bluesy. Yes, uh, Amber's mouth dropped open. I, I just forgot that. that I, I was waiting for it. I forgot I, that happened. She said, "Take care." I was waiting for it. Bluesy. I was like, "Girl, girl, you ain't get it to together." Go you don't all, know, they flying off. They, they, you got a lot of children that you could fall in love with. In that Me room. saying this, and I would have felt the exact same way if I was twelve. About about somebody that I liked. Oh. Say Joe Jonas flies in and I'm and I want to marry him. Let's not. And like Sophie Turner and he flies off with Sophie Turner. Floozy. Yeah. Twelve years old. Amanda. Probably. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Not out loud though. No. But anyway, um, my other one, Uncle Iroh, with any everything oh, about June. Uncle Iroh in June was disgusting, and it's I it's so don't out know of character. Yeah, I think it's out of character. It is out of character. Have some sense. He literally, like, she she shows up and he goes, very impressed. Ew, it was gross. It was gross. And then Zuko goes, I didn't see you get hit with a shoe, shoe, Uncle. And he's literally like, shh. And winks, and then June's like, "Ew!" because he has his um, his hands wrapped around her. Ew! 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 
ew, 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 ew. I, I hate it. I, I just don't do. like that. I really do. And then there's another one. Toff with all the little like. That, but then also someone said something about lip gloss. Twinkle foot. Is that what she said? No, I think it was, somebody said something about lip gloss to someone. <laughs> I think it was either to like Tylee or Kyoshi. Or, I can't remember. But somebody oh, says something about lip gloss. Oh, no. When Ty Lee, Azula, and May are fighting the Kyoshi Warriors, and Ty Lee goes, You're not prettier than us. That, that, that. Why was I thinking what you the lip gloss? fuck? But yes, that was crazy. It's like, what? Fucking focus. They, they have, n- none of them have ever mentioned how pretty any of them are <sighs> on camera or off. I think on camera I, or off. It's like behind the scenes bloopers like Barbie. Right. I, it, Literally, that was so unnecessary. You're it, not prettier than we are. And it's like, also, for you to say that to a Kiyoshi warrior, you sound dumb. You sound dumb as hell, girl. Like, are you kidding? That's Beautiful literally women. not what they're concerned about. That's not what they're concerned about. They're trying at to fight. Oh, um, this is not. Kiyoshi said, fuck that man. You're dead. Mm-hmm. Kiyoshi is a lesbian. Kiyoshi, came, Kiyoshi is lesbian. They were trying to ancestry. defend. They were trying to defend Aang when he was locked up in Avatar Day, and and he put on them boots. And Kyoshi, Kyoshi came back and, and said, "And the makeup, yeah." And the, <laughs> Kyoshi came back and said, "Actually, I did kill that man. <laughs> Actually, and I do it again. Thank you. <laughs> I kill that bitch, and I do it again. <laughs> I do that shit again. I do that shit you. again. And Aang was like, and I don't happened? regret it." You kind of confessed because, like, literally, first of all, she didn't. She didn't even kill him. He refused to move. Also, he was on his stubborn shit. Okay, male stubbornness. So he can stay on once the edge again, of the cliff and he can fall down. He can fall no down. No one gives a fuck every about day, you, sir. and what she do name? it again. Groundhog Day. She do it every day. Yeah, come on now. And okay, come but, on now. And that's so directly related to my next point, which is the twink. It's twinkle foot, twinkle right? toes. Twinkle toes. I was like, what is twinkle foot? Twinkle toes. That doesn't sound right at. All I could get with it, her saying twinkle toes, toff, and like two little girls out here. I could get with it if it was ever addressed. Like if they, she had an arc as if well. If she had an arc as well in, in like stopping that internal misogyny. Mm-hmm. However, she doesn't. She doesn't, but on a positive note, Aang, it literally never bothers Aang. No, yes. Aang never takes it as an insult. Yeah. He does not care. Aang doesn't give a fuck. I'm looking he at doesn't, him on your shirt and he's just like... He doesn't give a fuck and which is why I turned to Amber and I said, is Aang non-binary? And I think that also could be a take. Because sometimes Katara's like... Cause sometimes Ka- so- Sokka's like, oh, we're too manly men over here. You man only trip. Aang doesn't ever like give in to that though. Yeah. And sometimes it's Aang and Katara against Sokka. Mm-hmm. And it's like none of his decisions are ever gendered. Yeah. And he's bald. A lot of non-binary people are bald. (laughs) (laughs) He's got tattoos. Yeah. A lot of non-binary people have tattoos. He is happy-go-lucky, but then he also has a lot of anxiety. (laughs) Yeah. I'm speechless. Like, I... Did did you see my face? (laughs) I feel like my face was like Zuko after (laughs) Aang goes, I don't care what people say about you. You're really smart. And he's like... (laughs) But the only thing against that point mm-hmm. is that he was mad that a grown woman was playing him in Ember Island. Players. Yeah, I was gonna say there are some mo- moments where he does get with Sokka and act like an idiot man. But I just uh, I like that he gets with Sokka and acts like an idiot man sometimes, mm-hmm. and I also like that he's dainty and I guess he hasn't done anything pointed as an idiot man. Exactly. Like I like that he with the hair with like Oppa's hair shedding and like and then Toph like comes in, so it's showing that like cis women can also have masculinity. Yes. I think I think watching this show and with a lot of shows, you can definitely find your representation in there. Absolutely, with what's given. Because some shows you can't. Some shows it's there's just no room. All of the characters are hardcore straight, and you cannot extend your yeah. imagination to to find it enjoyable at all. But I feel like maybe that's why at least I gravitate to like fantasy sci-fi because it's Mm. already a little bit outside of this world so it's not normal in air quotes Mm. like it can't be normie yeah or kind of like it can it can be but it's less likely to now I want to talk about this because I know because now we've been talking a lot about theorizing sexuality of characters Mm -hmm. and I've been seeing on TikTok and reels whatever I'm on some queer people are really annoyed by that like like they really do not like when you assign like a sexuality or identity to a cis or straight character because I, I and I I get it to an extent because I'm like, well I, I do get it like I get it because it's it's like 
don't give the creators the benefit of the doubt they are making. I guess it's like queer baiting, but it's like don't give the creators the benefit of the doubt they only they made a show for straight people with all straight people. Yeah. And I just want to like make a little disclaimer note that that's not where we're coming from. We're coming from this like as queer people trying to find ourselves ourselves in this show in very different ways. Well, it's kind or, of I like mean in, in in very I mean not in different ways. In in obvious ways that are obvious to us because that's the lens we're looking at it from. I think you can say the same about characters on the spectrum, like neurodivergent characters, Mm -hmm. like identifying people because, you know, like, this is a terrible example, but like Sheldon on Big Bang Theory Mm -hmm. and a lot of people are like, oh, he's autistic and that's my, like, he's clearly autistic Mm -hmm. and autistic people saying this. And even though the writers might deny it, he is and this is what, they deny it? Some like I think there was something where like either the actor denied it or they deny it. I don't know. Mm. Or like or like Sherlock being autistic, but mm. it's never like said. Yeah. And I understand where they're coming from too, like queer baiting and like don't give them the benefit of the doubt. Mm-hmm. I think we got into an argument about this about Taylor Swift a few years ago. Do you remember that? About about Taylor, about her like fans Taylor? like saying that she's a queer icon and that her lyrics are queer. Oh. And that yes, you can put anything you want. They can mean anything to you. But there comes a problem when you're putting a straight, heteronormative, cis person on a pedestal for gay representation Mm -hmm. when that's not what they're doing and that's not who they're for. I think there's a fine line. But Taylor Swift is a real person Mm -hmm. who is not gay Mm -hmm. versus fictional characters. I think that's where where the line is. It's like, that's like fan fiction. Like, you can make characters gay. You can say if that character's gay to you. Mm Mm-hmm. That character got me gay. Yes. To you. Right. You know, like, yes. and yes, obviously, we need more explicitly gay yes. characters yes. and explicitly non binary and explicitly when, autistic. Yes, but when revisiting shows from the 2000s that you grew up in your child with in your childhood when you were in the closet. Right. It is healing to be like, you know what? Aang's non-binary. And you know what? Unique was black. Yeah, Unique like, was black, well, Aang's non-binary, and Sokka's trans. It's the same. And sa- that's the truth. It's the, no, literally. Like, there's so many, I get it, I get Gwen it. Gwen Stacy, that's become a thing now. A lot, oh yeah, like Gwen Stacy trans. I'm trying to, I'm trying the- to take my AirPod. I'm trying to adjust my AirPod right now. I was like, what are you doing? Like a lunatic. Amber's like in her ear and I'm like, oh, that's normal. I'm really glad we're having this conversation. No, me too. I think that this is because something I, I, in fandom that's a problem across all fandoms. I want. I know. But I know. I want, but remember what you're going to say about Gwen Stacy. But I'm really glad we're having this conversation because I saw like maybe two or three TikToks like this, like within the month, mm. maybe a month and a half, and I stopped assigning queer identities to TV shows I was watching because I thought I was being wrong. And I'm like, that's not fair to me. No, I'm trying to have a good time. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to have a good time. I think it becomes an issue if people are putting the creators on a pedestal. Did nobody say nothing about what they, these people? Nobody said nothing about these people. In the Miller household, when I am watching this show, this there's a possibility that this person identifies as this. And that is for me and anyone who wants to climb aboard that. But it's also But I am not about to put this in the LGBTQ plus uh on like category on Netflix. Right. That's not what we're doing. That's not what I'm doing. Also, there is something to be said about people who do not and will never use labels because they don't have the language to understand what they are. Mm -hmm. Like, there are plenty of characters in history. There's probably plenty of people in history who are non-binary and never even knew what that concept meant Mm -hmm. because they were forced to choose male or female. Yes. Like, the concept is not readily available to anyone that wants it. Yeah. Like, I didn't know what it was my whole life and I felt out of place with girls and boys. Yes. And I was just like, well, I guess I'm just a weirdo then and I'll just be a weirdo for the rest of my life. Yeah, but it's like, oh, everything's a concept. Yes, like... It you just d- makes more, it just, it, 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 it helps me and it makes me feel good to relate. 100%. To certain characters. Right. I think Uniqua is non-binary. Oh, is it harmful for black people to be like, Doug is black? Or like, what, Doug's friend, who do we think is black? Ginger, we said on this show, like, oh, Gin- we saw a theory that Ginger might be black. That and it's bitch like, is black. It's like, we're not saying that. We're not saying, oh, put Ginger on Black History Month. On Black Collection. Black Black Collection. Black Matter Collection. African American voices. Yeah. To the top. Rise to the top. No. No. Start airing it on BT. (laughs) (laughs) Like, give it an NAACP award. We're just.
just saying, you know what would be fun, you know what would make this uh, show more relatable or fun to watch, even more fun to watch, is if they looked like us or were uh, were identified the same as us. Also, they're acting, Kiyoshi, first of all, is canon a lesbian. In her, like, novelization, she is gay. Really? Yes. I need to read the in-betweens. And y'all, I am so mad. I mean, and I were just talking about this. <laughs> we were like, why haven't we read the content post on the books, in the books, in the comic books, everywhere? Because after watching this, we were like, Fiending. We were Fiending. like, we need to we need to see what they're up to. And we don't need to see them in flashbacks from Legend of Korra. We need to see no. what they're up to directly after. This is directly after it picks up their scenes from yes. Sozin's Comet in, in the this. promise. I read the first I read that one a while ago and I for some reason it just stopped because Y'all, I got I read distracted. half of this I giant ass book that's on the table. It's the whole promise last night. I read half of it last night. I couldn't put it down. I have to, I, I, like, I need it. I need to get into the lore. I'm you so know serious. why I'm we s- didn't? Why? It's because you said in 2011, I think, or whenever this came, right when it came out, you said, I tried to read it and I had to put it down when Aang and Katara called each other sweetie. <gasps> and I remember that my entire life and I started reading this and, and they hadn't until about page 40. And when they did, I had to put it, I did have to put it down. And then right after Sokka goes, ew! And I'm like, thank so- God for Sokka. Sokka makes the most sense sometimes. Thank God for Sokka. Sokka sometimes makes the most sense. And I actually wrote it. Because I why actually the- wrote this. No, listen, I said it's always hilarious when ha- when he's the one with the most sense. It's hilarious. It's because it's hilarious when the clown Ooh. is the straight man. You right, know? Like, yes. It's like he- Sokka. Well, Sokka's actually very smart. He's very, he has great plans and is very logical. He's very smart. He's just ridiculous at times. But I want to, like... That is disgusting. and It's so disgusting. No, it's actually, I'm vomiting. I, okay, a man and I do not ship Aang and Katara. No, we do not ship Katang. This is a Katang Katang hate podcast. Katang hate cast. Listen, (laughs) Katang hate cast. Katang hate cast. Katang hate cast. Katang stink cast. Katang is borderline incest cast because that is his mother. That is his mother. Okay, it is. She literally treats him like a son. She's like or a little brother. Every single interaction interaction except for the two times they kiss is a motherly inter- mother. mother to son interaction. Mother. Like I don't I don't have time for it. Mother like nurturing, like caring, like mothering him where he'd never had a mother, mm-hmm. telling him what to do, guiding him, Helping grounding him. him. Yeah, yeah, literally okay, his anchor, which is a teen wolf term which I like is because like the love of Scott's life but I'm talking about like Scott and Allison either I'll say it I know right but we're not talking about that and when we do get to Teen Wolf we have a lot of fucking words for you Jeff oh no we're gonna have to rewatch Teen Wolf (laughs) (laughs) talk about wait talk about a gay creator with no gay representation talk about a gay creator with no gay representation talk about that we can talk about that I've gone under the table Okay, we cannot talk about that right now. I just right realized now. that we have to binge watch all of Teen Wolf. I've been spitting. I don't want to do I've it. I've been spitting. I'm so mad. Okay. Hate cast. All right. Hate cast. Katara and Aang hate cast. Hating hate cast. Katara and Aang hate cast. Katara and Aang hate, hate cast. Okay. Do you like to I, begin or I? There's like... No structure. There's to no this. end. No. Okay. There's no structure. But we have to keep talking about the shipping because okay. this is a real reason why I was never active in the Avatar: The Last Airbender fandom. Because there's no way because to ship. The shipping was the biggest voices. The shipping I feel like is always the biggest voices. The horniest people are the loudest. I just don't think any of the ships on this show are interesting. It's not oh. only that I hate Katang because of how motherly Katara is throughout him the entire series. There's never one moment that she looks at him in it anything other like than a attracted. maternal or old elderly sister way. Like, she's never attracted to him. But the the opposite ship, Zutara, is not interesting to me either. The no. only thing that's interesting about it is enemies to lovers. Yeah. But it's like... I still don't want... Like, you had made the great point of, like, it's still, like, not a thing that you want because Zuko's morals are not... are, are more complex than Katara's. Katara's is just kind of like, we can't do that, that's wrong. Right, like, um, K- Katara and Aang both... Have very... Have the same... Right like, and wrong morals. Yeah, they're, like, the same person, mm-hmm. almost. It's like, there's no push and pull that you want in an interesting romantic ship. It's just not engaging. It's not engaging. 
It is an engaging. Like and Sokka and Suki is engaging. It is. It's cute. It's it's a it's 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 a little combative. It's like jokey, jokey. They're so cute. Don't even get me started on them and Sozin's comment. Like they're just so cute. They work them well and together. Island players are cute. Like they they started out as enemies. Sokka did not respect her. Yeah. She literally got him to get over himself. She's the coolest person she's in one of the, the world. She's one of the coolest people in the world. I, and I'm only saying one of them because I remember that Toph was in the show. Uh, Toph is literally, I think, the coolest person I like the coolest character I've ever seen in my life before we get on top I want to say yeah I don't ship Zutara but I also don't really ship Zuko and May and Me neither it's because of like I need I want Zuko to have someone with passion I think I wrote that down yes I wrote it down even um but also at the same time I'm just gonna be honest I don't really want to see Zuko with anyone <laughs> I want to see Zuko period thank you I want to see Zuko with me like yes this is my most I think this is my most painful fictional character crush he because he's is, not he's not real listen no i said something i said something somewhere i said i don't know where i said it hold on i said i said something everyone bear with me i said re him in the Earth King, the episode after he releases Appa and he has his little meltdown, like he literally like gets sick. He gets physically ill because he his body is shifting in energy and like doing the right thing and like his destiny is changing. His body is so confused. But like, anyways, I said in that episode, that is when I had to say out loud during this rewatch, I said Zuko is hot because I was holding my tongue because he is hot. In a lot of other like parts of season two, but this episode, I was like, okay, I just had to say that. I was like, okay, I think I like gasped or something. Amber, something. It was like I, what I said that I wanted to share was it's not fair to draw a non-existent being to look this way, and it isn't because he is literally not real. He is a cartoon character, and I have never seen anyone on this earth look or talk like Zuko. I my only note here because that I was looking for is Amber started having a breakdown over Zuko shirtless in this episode. What are you throwing that bucket for? Like that? Now I want to note that Zuko had it been sleeveless with his muscles out and shirtless multiple times before this yeah. point, but it was then that Amber started gasping and being <laughs> short of breath <laughs> and <laughs> hollering and looking away and throwing pillows. I was sitting on it the entire rewatch. <laughs> and it's like his hair length got to that point and he was turning into a decent person that I was just like, no, nah, 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 nah. I can't go on. <laughs> I need to say that Zuko is the hottest <laughs> fictional character ever created. Who? No, I'm serious. Who drew him? Ever. Who drew Zuko? Ever. Who did it? And it's so pain it's so painful because he's a cartoon character. He is not real. Like I <laughs> had ne never been Ugh. Is Zuko in the room with us? No. And he never will be. The thing is, it's because Dante Bosco has a really hot voice. It's hot, unique, beautiful. It's great. Luscious. And I'm not saying anything against him mm -mm. but he doesn't look like Zuko because no one looks like Zuko and, and then nobody looks and like Zuko to continue his voice is applied to other cartoon characters and they're cute but they're they are not as hot as Zuko like I yeah I had my crush on American Dragon Jake Long me too he is a cutie mm -hmm. but he is not Zuko something <laughs> happened where I was attracted to Jake Long and then wait, there was one time where Jake Long was on and then I flipped the channel and Avatar was on and Zuko, it was season one, Zuko, bald, bald ponytail. Mm -hmm. <gasps> I know what you're about to say. And I said, he's freaking me out. <laughs> he's weirding me out. Why does he own, what? how does the ponytail only grow there? <laughs> oh yeah, we like, like. I was like, do you think he, shaves every day or it only grows there and then we Later, we came we to the conclusion that oh he was burnt and it only grows there yeah we we that's up, wrong yeah that's wrong we grew up and we were like oh he his hair doesn't grow on the scarred part even though he it's only it's, this it's part like, literally, clearly his it's eye clearly is scarred his and eye. it ends so clearly it the rest of his head's bald, bald and clean. not scarred so it okay so it is legitimately he is shaving it every day which is 
something part of a real culture. Yes. Like, it's like the, his lack of honor, like, yes. because he was burned there, like, he will not grow it back. Which is then leading me to talk about how Sokka and Aang shave their heads every single day. Right. As a child, I never thought about the Aang. The Aang. I never thought about the Avatar having hair. Not no, once. Me not once did I think that. I thought it was a Caillou situation. Yeah. Like, I was just like, this is just what he looks like. And then, <laughs> what? and then comes season three. <laughs> he wakes up with all of his hair, and he's like, "My hair!" And it's because he had, he's been out, he's been passed out. He hasn't been shaving it every day. Yeah. He said, "I have hair." And Katara's like, "Yeah, honey, and, oh. you do." He's like, "How long was I out?" And she's like, "A few weeks." You were out for a little bit. You, you, you died. died. I went down. I didn't just get injured. I was gone. You were gone. And you brought me back. Yeah. Yeah, she did. With that water, with that holy water, which I want to... That we, she was a going to use on Zuko. Zuko's face. Yes. And I and we both we both came to the conclusion that like it would not have done anything. But no. you say you say why you think that I, because I have my own thing. I said that it wouldn't have worked at that moment because it's spirit water and his spirit is deeply unhealed. Mm -hmm. But if he was healed, if he had healed that wound and if he wasn't trying to get his honor back and if he didn't care about his father's approval and love, maybe it would have healed. Okay, and I, I'm glad that you answered first because I ha I thought that too. But then my other thing is like, I don't like thinking that he his scar would heal, even though, it, yes, it's like a horrible circumstance and it never should have happened. Mm -hmm. I think even if he is healed on the inside, I think that the scar, getting the scar, had so much to do with kickstarting his healing process that it has to stay there. Like, it's part of him. Like, it's proof that he is healing yeah. in a way. Yeah. Like, I the scar is proof that he started the healing process because, I, I mean, maybe he would have gotten there eventually, but if his father didn't banish him at 13 for speaking out in something that he genuinely believed in, yeah. that was right, and it was his, he was pledging allegiance to his people, mm -hmm. which is what the Fire Lord, the Fire Lord should be pledging his allegiance to the Fire Nation, but yet he wants to use them as bait to take yeah. over the other, the, other, the other elements. Right. So maybe he would have gotten there if he didn't speak out with, with his heart later. I, and I don't but think I, so. And so. Okay, see, yeah, if his father wasn't like, you can't speak at all, Mm -hmm. maybe he could have, you know, kept Zuko hush-hush and kept him on his side for a little bit longer. But Zuko said, thumbs up. That's not Zuko's nature. Like, I really don't think that there is a world in which Zuko could suppress those thoughts. I don't think like, so either. He the way has that so he much is, heart and passion. He's so passionate and on it, and it, and, it and, some, and sometimes, like fire, he just lets it out and it's a little does, out of control. And it's out of control. Yeah. And also, on that note... I said, and maybe if he were healed, and I'm like, truly and honestly, in his entire life, I really don't think that Zuko will get to the point where he is completely, completely past that. I think he will completely always- past what? Past- Going against his father? The- Family? The injury that that did. Because he will completely, for the rest of his life now, be separated from his entire family. His Except for side. uncle. His, not his mother's side. But he doesn't even know his mother. He's cut off. I know, but I'm thinking about how he will always be with his grandpa because he's always gonna he's always gonna help the Avatar. He will always be with the great grandpa. That's true. That's his family. But half of him and half, half of his him. face and <laughs> shit. Well, shit. You know what I want? I want, I want a I want a cardboard cut out of Zuko. So do I, and I'm so upset. I, it like this is the only time ever. I think I would die if I had a cardboard. Cut. Literally every morning. This is the only time Zuko's the only time I've ever like wanted like self insert <laughs> me with him. Like yeah, and it's impossible because he's a cartoon. He's a cartoon like character. I would try to visualize it. <laughs> you can't. I couldn't. You can't. It's like what would I look like? Unless you get the cartoon to draw me. Or like I don't even know what Zuko would look like in real life. I like have no idea what that boy would look like. The, and the, I don't think I wanna know. The actor playing Zuko in the live action, Dallas Liu, mm -hmm. is hot. I don't really know what he looks I, like. I'll, he's hot. I've seen and, him, but like I haven't paid him any mind. And sorry. I saw him in Pen Fifteen. He was a little younger, okay. <laughs> he's twenty one now. <laughs> Amanda. He's hot. That's all I will say. Okay. And I don't, I have not seen him as Zuko, but 
I just don't even know how to picture Zuko with live action. You know, like I can't. what does Zuko look like as a real person? I don't, I don't know. know. It's like a vibe. I really, yeah, it's like I, I don't, I Lord to God, don't know. I mean, ob- okay, clear. Oh, so clearly he would be Japanese. Okay. That's one. That's all we got. That's though. all we got, though. Because I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what his build would look like. I don't know how his hair would fall in his face correctly. It's almost. And I don't know what that scar would look like. It's almost as if like I would need to see if a person came across, and the only way to it is describe their vibe would be like Zuko. But I have never I would met someone. Fall like that. to my knees if someone came across, and the <laughs> only way I was like, if, and if 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 someone walked past me, and the only thought that came to mind was that guy looks like Zuko, I would fall down i would fall down to my knees i can't even begin to picture that i can't even begin to start piecing that imagery together what i wanted to say was about zuko he has always had heart and he's always pledged allegiance to the virus which i've already which, which i've already said but like yeah he he can't control it sometimes because he said to zhao zhao was like you have no respect and me talking like you virus. have no respect <laughs> Me, <laughs> Zhao, you, you have, have no, no respect, respect, Zuko. <laughs> you have no respect, Zuko. Um, no, Zuko said, if my, he said, if my father thinks the rest of the world will, will willingly follow him, then he is a fool. Then he is a fool. That just slipped out of his brain because, that just slipped out of his mouth because that's the truth. He said, I know the rest of the world ain't gonna follow my, my daddy's dumb ass. I know the rest of the world thinks that they got some pride. He literally, this is why I relate to Zuko the most. As a character, and why I always say I'm, I would probably my element would be fire. I never say Fire Nation because I would not be loyal to the Fire Nation. I would be on those firebending masters shit, the, mm-hmm. the, sun, the warriors. sun warriors. I'd be on that shit. Like, don't at, tell nobody on the here. outskirts Bye. of society. <laughs> we respect the dragons. We are one with the dragons. But with Zuko specifically, it's like he does not know when to shut up. Mm-mm. He says the first thing in his mind. Mm-hmm. He is impulsive yeah uh, like aries to... energy like fire energy like fire first and then oops what did i do did i do that did i do that yeah like i burned like the burned place down. and like <clears throat> i cannot believe he said that like yeah. to zhao who's like a admiral i don't know the rankings he was he he's was, a highly ranked he was i think it was general soldier yeah. general and then admiral either way he was a fucking loser he is a fucking it loser. goes ozai and then zhao right on up under him i think zhao's bigger loser i think it's sozin and then and then zhao and then azulon and then, no, it goes Sozin, Zhao, Ozai, Azulon. I don't know enough about Azulon to know why he was a loser, but Ranking he seemed lo- to be kind of level-headed most when he was like, are you suggesting? Most to least loser. Most most Sozin, Zhao, um, Ozai, I was about to say Ozin, and Azulon. Azulon. I think I agree. Because it because goes Sozin, Sozin started the whole you war. You weak-ass bitch, Sozin. You little fake-ass Ho, okay, you flew over to that volcano to save Roku and then you let him die because you're a weak, little, insecure, loser bitch, okay? And then it, that it's like it's like that episode of um Broad City, you narcissistic <laughs> where where the you woman narcissistic asshole. The woman's um the woman's 30-year-old son is like a street kid and he comes home and she's like loser, 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 loser. That's exactly right. That's Sozin. That's 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 and you know what? Yeah, that's Sozin. Mm-hmm. Cuz I was going to be like, but is that Zhao? Betrayal. It's actually all of them. Zhao, it's all of them. Okay, yeah. So it's loser, 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 loser. They're losers. Um Zhao's a loser because he, that, that was so stupid. And the deserter when Aang made him f- like burn down all of his navy ships. I'm like, you're a fucking idiot. You're actually a fucking idiot for you're not being looking played. anywhere. You cannot be the general of whatever crew you're doing when you have no sense and no 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 thought to calm yourself down before you burn all of your transportation. Like it was that's actually insane. Like for that to happen and he should have been have called home. No foresight. None. You're not looking you're you're blasting your own boats. It's crazy. And then and then for him to kill the koi fish so he can be called the moon slayer. It's like what are why you talking about? Why would you want to be called the moon slayer? You're as Iroh said that's not going to only fuck up the water tribe. It 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 it's imbalance of the, the entire place. The whole place just turned red. Can you see? Which like honestly, this series 
is so good at depicting war and fascism yeah. and the and the the dangers of imperialism and colonialism. Mm-hmm. Yes. And like Yes, the Fire Nation represents Japan within the Asian countries like Japan, Earth Kingdom, China, Water Tribe, Inuit, um, Air Nomads, Buddhist monks. Good. But but (laughs) in the greater scheme of things in the world, the Fire Nation is America and Western imperialism Mm -hmm. and how it has destroyed the global south and On. indigenous people. It's destroyed everywhere. Like, literally destroyed the balance of nature, destroyed the harmony of humanity, mm-hmm. destroyed our connection to ourselves. To ourselves and to each other. And to each other and to As the world. We're, the illusion is that we're separate. We are not separate. We are the same. Mm-hmm. We are all part. The And that's on the swamp. That's on the swamp. And I just want to note that, like, a lot of times people, when... There are genocides happening, like the one that is happening against the Palestinian people by Western imperialism. When genocides are happening, people want to be like, you want to fight for the little people in the movies, but why don't you in real life? Mm -hmm. And they always point to Harry Potter. And I'm like, I just think Avatar is a better representation. Avatar is a better representation. It's more complex. It's smarter. It hits harder like the metaphors are more the metaphors are bare like okay the metaphors are are they hit heart closer to home yes they do because they're richer they're like i mean even in jet when sokka was like sokka who was very much so like oh you're a firebender get out of my face oh Mm -hmm. you're a firebender you're automatically evil right jet is when we saw Sokka and kind of I guess it was like helping the audience get to know like the Fire Nation isn't is in rule, but that there are also civilians within the Fire Nation right. who are not playing that part in the war. No, right. At all. Like they are very much civilians. Exactly. And which is why it's also important to have an entire season within the Fire Nation in season three. Exactly. Yeah. You see all the you see all the Fire Nation kids going to schools, like you see you see you see everything. You see them being indoctrinated. Yeah. But you also see that they're just civilians as well. Yeah, they're standing up saying the pledge to the fire the same way we stood up inside the Pledge of Allegiance. And then also, yes, yeah, conquering land is very uh parallel because I was gonna bring up uh Iroh. He was raised to go to war, mm-hmm. and he really wanted to conquer Ba Sing Se for the Fire Nation. Yeah. And then he said, you know, what I realized is I need to take it back from the Fire Nation. Like, I did, my destiny was to take Ba Sing Se, but it was to take it back. Mm-hmm. Um, because you can't just go around conquering places at, like, their little pins to put on a on a sash. Right. Okay, that's not what this is. Right. Um, it throws the world off balance. Yes, like, that's not, that's not yours! <laughs> <laughs> that's not yours um literally like Zhao says in blue spirit we're gonna burn bossing say to the ground sorry but like idf soldiers have said the exact same thing about a, gaza no i think also i'm just gonna say i think that's also another reason why there were more tear works water works in this viewing because, because it's like a little it's a little it was like a little too parallel and also, like this, I think this and the Hunger Games do out doubly. Like yeah. it's it's just it's 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 strange, and I think like meant to be that the Hunger Games and Avatar are coming back into the zeitgeist mm-hmm. right now mm-hmm. too, because it's not only like war, and not only like what we think of war. Our idea of war is like men fighting each other. The realities of war, though, are that it's really cruel, and the peop- the weakest always suffer the most, and that's usually children. Because they have nothing. Mm-hmm. They're children. Yeah. And that's the way that wars are won is by the person winning killing ch- children and not caring that children are being killed. Mm-hmm. Like in the Hunger Games, and it's like heightened in the Hunger Games, so it's like, yeah, children are being killed. You're kind of like desensitized to it. Yeah. But then in Avatar, it's like, oh, these are grown adults killing children, killing children and aiming to kill these children. Yeah. Like they don't care. Yeah. They simply do not care, and that's who we're dealing with. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of times people who deny genocides happening or like deny the realities are like well like that's not happening yeah like like people have consciences and it's like not really no like people don't have consciences because it gets to such a big scale where it's desensitized where it's like they're not thinking they're not thinking of the children as a person you can have empathy 
all you want. Like you, yeah, you can you can sit in a, a place of power and have all the empathy you want. But that empathy is only going to extend towards the people that you value as a human being. Exactly. And if your your vision of a human being suddenly stops within your walls, yeah, or of a certain of a certain look or identity, then they're not going to have empathy towards that person who is a person. Exactly. Because they don't value them as a person. Exactly. It's like people will will rationalize. This is what I meant to say. People will rationalize it by being like they're not killing kids. They're killing future terrorists. And right. that's how they dehumanize somebody. Yes. It's like they see them as subhuman. So it's fine because those kids are not human. Mm-hmm. That's the danger of propaganda. Mm -hmm. Like, even the civilians within the Fire Nation and civilians within Western imperial places, and I'm including America in this, like, we eat up the propaganda and we're complicit in the propaganda. Mm -hmm. Like, you might not be taking a gun and going to war, but, like, we all take part in colonialism and we all need to decolonize our minds to a certain extent. Yes. And I'm also not saying, like, oh, you can use... Like, treat the victims of war and genocide like fictional characters, because I think that's dangerous and, like, parasocial and infantilizing to just be like, oh, I care about them because they remind me of my fi- my favorite fictional characters. Yeah. Which is, I've seen a lot of people kind of doing. Mm. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that stories and storytelling are very useful tools to, like... To learn. Learn and, like understand the world that's yes. why we tell stories and that's why we ingest stories yes, to have history not repeat itself also stories are based off of something at all like always they're always based off of something yeah so because everything is connected um on a lighter note or maybe not even a lighter note but like on that same note this show really reminded me of doctor who because ang is the last of his kind mm-hmm. his entire race was killed in a genocide and he regenerates Oh, like, yeah, it's not the that same is, thing. Like is regeneration isn't like the doctor's the same person and the avatar becomes different people. But then I'm like, is it useful to think of regeneration that way? Because they are different people. They have different tastes. They have different personalities slightly. They just have all the same memories. But I, I think it's cool. Aang doesn't. I know. I know. But like that he has access to them, you know? Yeah. He has access to those yeah. lifetimes. Yeah. Because Kiyoshi came back and said, I did it. But OK. Yes. Speaking of comparing it to other works, I wanted to say that Aang, I just feel like it's a trope to have like the young boys, like some young boy is the prophecy or whatever, and he's going to help everything. And I feel like in Harry Potter and Percy Jackson, it's like the you are the prophecy and someone is coming back to start war. The cho- You're the chosen one. You're the chosen one. one and uh oh, someone's coming back to start the war. Like it's Kronos and Voldemort. But with Avatar... Aang comes back and he comes back to end the war. And I just think it's funny that that's exactly backwards from all the other tropes. Right. And also, I that's so weird that you said that because I wrote down, is the Avatar the chosen one? Because the chosen one is a trope that gets done a lot of times. And I, a, a, to the point where now in new stories, I like don't really like when the main character is the chosen one. Because it's like, okay, yeah, of course he's the yeah, chosen duh, one. Right. He's the main character. Yeah. But <gasps> Are you but about to say something? I'm about to say. Oh my God. <gasps> I'm about to say, is the Avatar the Chosen One? Juan was just a regular person. Mm-hmm. And he just decided, like his circumstances, because he was so poor and because he was so caring, his circumstances led him to being outcast and led him to having to talk to the spirits and 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 like being in this situation and mm-hmm. like like it's like is the avatar chosen or is it or is that person was he made cuz he's just a regular person but it shows i think it's beautiful that he's not the chosen one and that he is just the one that was chosen he just happened to be the one that was chosen because of the circumstances because of his poverty his circumstances he started learning all the elements and then he made a mistake mm-hmm. and it was his mistake to rectify mm. and he rose to the challenge mm. and i think that that's beautiful wait Actually, that happens with three avatars we know. Because that happens with... His name is Juan? Juan. Okay. Not Juan. <laughs> okay. I was like... W-A-N. I, you, I literally thought you said Juan. But okay. That happens with Juan. That also happens with Roku. Okay. Yes. Because he said, I'm going to let, let you slide, idiot friend. I'm going to let you slide, Sozin. Mm-hmm. And then Sozin acts up. Mm-hmm. And then Aang runs away and mm-hmm. freezes for 100 years. Mm-hmm. Those are three mistakes that they implemented. And I think that, that it's they sh- had to rectify. It's showing how human 
that nature is. Me. Like, human, they are still humans. They're not above everybody mm-hmm. else. And they're not chosen above everybody else. It's not Avatar supremacy. Mm-hmm. It, he was not the chosen one. Mm-mm. He was just the guy that, because of his circumstances, had to survive in the wilds, mm-hmm. had to... Convene with the spirits had, had to had to become the the bridge the world the world he had to become the bridge, the bridge. The world because because he was he the only acted one. up he acted up and then he also learned the most before everyone else and so he was like oh I see it yeah it's like it's a normal guy but because Rava is with them they're they're learning more about like spiritual spirituality and like how all of the elements are connected that he they need to translate that to the other humans who do not have Rava and also used with them how worldly he was. Mm-hmm. Like, he was, like, one of the only humans that had, like, been to all, to all of the places. He, he's just the Im- ambassador. He's for the, the bridge. world. And he's the bridge. He's the bridge. And that's what the Avatar, I think that's what humans' nature needs. Like, mm-hmm. we need people mm-hmm. that are bridges. It's mm-hmm. not going to be everybody. No. But if you were chosen, like, not chosen, but, like, if that's if your you calling. If you knowledge, yeah, if you learn something, if you had a realization that you need to share Go ahead and share and it's, it. And it's, I love it because it's not just about the power and the abilities. Mm-hmm. It's not just about like having great power. Yeah. With great power mm-hmm. comes great responsibility. Mm-hmm. But it's also like with great emotional intelligence comes great responsibility. Yes. Like he said, well, I'm, I'll am i do it because I know spirits with, and I know people. Yes, I know spirits and I know people. With great emotional intelligence comes great responsibility. And Aang said, none of you are understanding why I'm so stressed. I am not going to take this man's life. That is how we got here in the first place. Right. He said, that is literally something I am not going to do. I'm not going to end it that way. There has to be another way. And he walked on over to that wi- lion turtle and figured it out. He figured it out. I literally could not have predicted any other ending. My, my, my the, for, I don't, I want, I wish I could go back and watch my 12 year old self watch that scene for the first time. Before you, before you say what you're making that face over, <laughs> um, I want to say, I thought we, where you were going with that, you know what I thought you were going to say? I thought you were going to say that Zuko was the chosen one. Hmm. Now hear me out. Okay, I thought you were going to say Zuko was the chosen one of his time because he is a firebender who... He's a prince. I mean, honestly, he's the... Zuko, okay, Zuko will be the chosen one because... <laughs> <laughs> he is the bridge between the imperialists mm-hmm. and the imperialized. Mm-hmm. Not because he's been imperialized, but he knows how to... He's no, no. Zuko's not the chosen one. He, well, okay, he no, is, but he is the double O agent. In the same way, though, but they're 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 always parallel. And they they set them up to be parallels yes. from the very beginning, the very first episode. Like we don't see Zuko as just the villain. We have just as much depth in his character as we do in Aang's, and mm-hmm. they're always constantly parallel. Yeah. And so I feel like in the same way that Aang and the Avatar is the chosen one that's not exactly the chosen one. Like, he is parallel to Aang. Like, it's like they were split roles. Yeah. Because he is the fire prince, but he was banished. He, 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 you're right. He he relates to the imperial and the, the imperialized because he was banished. He was an outsider. Yeah. And by accident, he went to every single place that <gasps> Aang went. Yeah, he did. He went all over the world he, and saw just as much as Aang saw. He did. And he said, now... He, cause in that, in that, in that last straw, and I wrote this down too. They could have kept Zuko. They could have kept Zuko on their side. I'm talking about the Fire Nation, the Fire Lord, and Azula. They could have kept his ass on their side yep. if they would have just invited Loved him. him. It, okay, sure, but if they would have just invited, if they would have just invited him to that damn meeting, and he didn't have to find out about it from someone from May, he would have stayed in the dark. He would have stayed in the dark. Well, for a little longer. Because the reason, like, okay, Azula tried to bring him home at the beginning of season two because she was like, you're embarrassing the family. You've embarrassed the family. Uh, the Avatar just wiped out our, what is it called? Fleet. Fleet. That uh, just wiped out our fleet and you were nowhere to be found and you're now embarrassing us. Zhao is dead and you're embarrassing. So they, she tried to bring him home. He, they weren't able to do that. And then at the end of season two, she was like, you know what? I need Zuko's hands because at this point, he's just going to do something that makes me lose. And whether it's for me, it's to capture the avatar himself or not, 
it's gonna make me lose and I don't have time for it. So she was like, Zuko, come on home and we'll treat you right. Okay, so they really tricked him and they were like, come home, we'll treat you right. And I, I don't think that's from the kindness of their hearts. I think that's because they were like, Zuko's in the way and we need to, Absolutely. We need to keep an eye on them. So I think that if they would have kept on doing that, they would have really like treated him well, like pampered him, like done whatever type of like thing he imagined his fire prince advantages would have been he would have stayed with them a little longer but because they didn't invite him to that meeting and then he found out and then he went to the meeting and they were like talking about wiping people out he was having a flashback and he had just bit lived with a lot of earth kingdom people like a lot a lot of them had taken him in t- taking care of him and his uncle for like all of season two yep and so he said the earth kingdom are a, a proud people and that the response to that was, yes, you're right. Let's take away their pride. And mm-hmm. Zuko was like, that's not what I meant. And that's not what I said. And But I'm not about to get my other eye burned. And then he wrote that letter and he left. And to go back to Ozai being a loser, when he went to Ozai and said, I'm going to leave, Ozai said, let me shoot lightning at you. Let me shoot lightning at my son. And then his son redirected it and he blasted backwards like a loser. He's a loser. Loser, 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 loser. I, regardless of who is the chosen one and who is not, I lose it over the Avatar. I love the Avatar. I burst into tears when Aang showed up at the end of Korra episode one. Amber burst into tears when Aang showed up in the opening credits of Korra. Oh and best believe that if there's another series about the next avatar who's an earthbender and Korra shows up, I'm a burst into tears. Absolutely. I don't play yeah. about the avatar. No, it's so I do not play about the avatar. It is so spiritual and it's so sentimental. And you know what? Before we continue, I want to say something that they might have missed in Legend of Korra, an opportunity that they could have done. They re- I think they really should have had her become like really close to the Fire Lord at that point because that would be Zuko. I think it was Zuko's granddaughter or something at that Grand point. Grandson? Grand. It's not daughter. It was his grandson. Then he was, he had daughter. daughter? It was his grandson. No, I think it was his daughter who was the Fire Lord currently and his grandson was, was like uh, was a um, colonel. colonel and it was and it Dante was, Bosco's it voice. Da- Dante Bosco's voice coming back <sighs> to upset everyone. No, I, I just, I, I think, know, I know that people, people and like creators don't like when reboots heavily rely too much on the original cast, but, but that's this one, all I wanted. No, uh, yes, honestly, the this most is the Avatar reboot. I really needed to see more of the original characters. I was way more interested in <sighs> Aang's children when the three of them started coming into it than anyone else on the any show. of the other characters. And I don't know what that's about. I just don't think that their dynamics and them as characters individually individually even were as interesting to me as the original characters. It might be because they were not born in a war and like they, their characters were really surface level to a certain extent. I need to rewatch Korra though because I, I don't want to shit all over it. Yeah, I, I just, even... it didn't speak to, I don't think that, I also don't think that Korra's a bad show. I think the villains are better and more mor- morally complex because it's a little bit more adult. Like yeah. if you, like Avatar's intro level morality complex stuff, but I just don't, the characters. Yeah, I just, I think that they should have continued the Avatar and the Fire Lord like friendship because that's what I wanted to see. That 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 watching Avatar and the Fire Lord in season three, I didn't stop crying once. I literally started crying at the beginning, and the tears did not stop streaming down my face. And once. I was sobbing when Roku showed up for the first time. <sighs> I was sobbing when that they and during the Winter so... Solstice, and they open the doors, and Roku is the one that's like getting every like. Yes, he he, is, he goes he goes. There, there's, now there's a great threat on the other side of the door, but I will help you. Are you re- uh, when you're ready? Because Aang, who is fresh out of the iceberg, only knows Airbending a child in denial like Roku was like I'm gonna get you out of this one when you're ready and he busted out there it was Roku standing in his glory and you know why it's so emotional it's because it's Roku the avatar the fire nation the avatar who is from the fire nation staring at all the fire sages who have betrayed the avatar and Zuko and General Zhao who have all lost the plot entirely and now the fire nation's avatar is standing in front of you helping the current airbender avatar that you're hunting down now look how foolish you look. This firebender is about to blast all of you out of here. And you know who it is? It's just the little boy that you're chasing. It's just the little boy that you're chasing. You have no sense. You are not connecting anything. You are not connecting any dots. And the fire sage that helped them goes, Avatar Roku. And the Avatar and the fire sage that helps them is like all of the all of the fire sages have left um left the Avatar side, but my grandpa has always had faith. 
And that is on generational wisdom. That fire stage, stage has generational wisdom. He said, my grandpa is loyal to the Avatar and I am loyal to the Avatar. Come this way, I'll get you in there. I love the Avatar. I, I love the Avatar. I love the Avatar. Like, And at the end of the beginnings... At the end of the beginnings, when, like, it's the end of Juan's life, and he's like, Rava, I failed you. I didn't bring peace to the world. And she's like, I will be with you always in every single lifetime. And he dies. It goes pitch black, and there's a baby cry. And then Cora opens her eyes. And then Cora opens her eyes in that little pit that all the sages... Are, are in. Oh my God. And they go, Do you know, know who, who you are? are? Oh my God, Amanda, you're gonna <laughs> start crying. Really crying. No, Amanda did not cry once in this rewatch. She's having and then a. She a said, race. I'm the avatar. We don't have any tissue. I'm here. literally crying. <laughs> like, do you know who you are? Okay. It's the same exact feeling I get whenever the doctor regenerates and oh the my first God. time they say, I'm the doctor. Oh my God. If I can continue to think about this, I will be sobbing for the next 30 minutes. Okay, I just want to say again that this has been the most wildly <laughs> structured episode. <laughs> there is no structure. We have notes, y'all, and nothing is going in order. Nothing's going in order. I just also want to say the last thing about the beginnings. Juan saves this little, <laughs> like, cat deer thing when it's a baby. <gasps> oh! And then it's his companion. And it's the first animal companion. Because he saved this animal's life. Amanda, oh my honey. <laughs> I need to blow my you nose. You look like a baby. <sighs> oh my god. Oh my god. I came protected. You brought that? Stole it from the bathroom. <laughs> Sorry, but I want to know what Ozai and Iroh's childhood was like. I want to see what that dynamic was. Because we don't see them on screen together once. And Iroh's like, my brother. He's like, I can't, I can't. Zuko's like, you can fight him. You can fight him. You can defeat him. And Iroh's like, I'm not about to go kill my brother. There's, the history's just going to remember it as like a brother against a brother. And he's right. Um, it has to be the Avatar. And the Avatar doesn't even kill him. He doesn't. Um, this show turned me spiritual. On the spectrum of spiritual and religious, it turned me way more spiritual than religious. Like, it introduced me to a lot of concepts that are well known in Eastern and indigenous cultures that are completely antithetical to the rigid structure of white supremacy and Christianity. <laughs> um, and I was like really vibing with it. No, I agree. I, yes, I think it turned me spiritual in that way, but also I just had an acupuncturist appointment and I, I acupuncturist? I had an acupuncture appointment and mm -hmm. I've had one other before, which was fine, but it wasn't great. But in this one, having just binge watched all of Avatar, she was talking about how something that was emotionally stressful to me from literally 2022 was affecting me. Mm. And she, I think she got rid of it in the first session because mm. I still have back pain, everyone, but I, it's less. Like, it's physically, like, I can literally feel the difference. No, literally, like, stress carries and in I, your body. And I think, like, this is, like, what I said to her was maybe, like, one of the first times I admitted that that was something that was so stressful. It was a boss. It was an old boss who, like, literally put all the stress they had on me. And I, I didn't feel like I could move from the couch and from my computer. Like, I just felt like I had to stay there. Yeah. And not move. And, and, I, and she was like, oh, shit, I hope he never really listens to this. <laughs> okay, but she was like, did you ever, and was it, and it was work from home, so you never saw, you you didn't see him face-to-face -face often? I was like, no, I, I only saw him face-to-face -face maybe two weeks out of the eight months that I worked there, and he was always calling me. And she was like, that's gonna do it. And I was like, oh, is it? <laughs> That might have done it. That yeah. might have been the one of the things. I think it was several things, but I've I've changed no. so many aspects of my life in this year that I can't tell what I got rid of that helped a lot. But I think several things that I got rid of have helped. It's this year. definitely shedding a lot. Yeah. And like But chakras are real and there's something blocked. The chi was blocked, the energy was blocked, and the tension was being held in my back. I feel the same way about certain things about my life that, like, were blocked. Mm. Like, literally, I'm, like, by myself and others, but also, like, it's always back to you. It's, like, you have the power to unblock yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's, like, something that 
I inadvertently got from Avatar first because yeah. it reached me at such a young age that it was like when I started hearing about the things that inspired Avatar, like mm-hmm. the practices and spirituality that inspired Avatar, I'd be like, oh, that makes sense. And then in the back of my mind, this is just like that one scene in Avatar. No, honestly, always, always, always. And I, my senior quote was Iroh. What was it? It was, now I can't remember it, but it was something about destiny. It was something really good, but I was just going to, I brought that up. I need to find it. And like, I, and I'll, and I'll, I don't know what I'll it's do. It's serious But business. it's it's real. Like, like watch, the, the different times that I've watched Avatar all the way through, there's always a lesson that is relevant to what's going on now. And Iroh being like, listen, Zuko, what you think your destiny is, is not how how it is all the time like you might be thinking you might be looking at it at a different way like the avatar is is your destiny but it's to help him and he has always been a symbol of hope for you right but that's because you you have hope in humanity and in the world mm-hmm. you don't you're it's not to go home to your family who doesn't have hope for humanity and in the world who's actively trying to burn the world to ash um and so i i, I really it's it's just it's there's so many lessons out heart it's very spiritual every single time and connects to a past life or someone in the spirit world, there's a lesson to be learned. There's always lessons to be learned. And also in not just like life lessons, like storytelling lessons, like this show I put on such a high pedestal for how like tight and focused and like meaningful and impactful and funny and dark and deep all at the same time, like, mm-hmm. and heartwarming and tear jerking all at the same time. Like, anytime I'm talking about my taste, it all goes back to Avatar. Yeah. Like, anytime I'm talking about what I want to do, it all it all goes back to Avatar. I'm always saying, like, um, you know, I really like fantasy and sci-fi, but anything I have to do has to be funny. Like, comedy. Like, comedy mixed with fantasy and sci-fi. And people mm. are always like, like, what? And I'm like, um, what? Uh, like, <laughs> um... Uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender, like, but but they're like, oh, so you want to be in animation? You want to write a kids animated TV show? And I'm like, like, not exactly. Like, have you seen the show Undone on Amazon Prime? And like, no one's seen that. That's another animated show. And it's like the way they nail everything is just something I've never seen before. It's just difficult to nail down what now. All of these different themes. Now I've been saying. Now I've kind of been saying um, everything everywhere all at once. Because of how funny and it's action packed and it's like sci fi and it's like deep and familial and generational mm-hmm. all together and weird. But I really just don't have any references. Like, and also I have felt this is another note I wrote down is like the erasure of fantasy and sci fi and like the disrespect it gets along with animation. Like, I feel like people look mm. down on something if it's fantasy or, or sci fi. And if it's animation, if it's animation, it's on, uh, it's automatically for kids. Yeah. If it's fantasy and sci-fi, it's automatically camp or like a low, like lower on the totem pole than like deeply respected things. Mm-hmm. So like when somebody asks me, asks me what my favorite show is, my favorite shows are Avatar, Last Airbender, and Doctor Who. But I don't usually lead with that because people have automatic assumptions about me when I say that. They're like, oh, so you just like fantasy and sci-fi, mm-hmm. and like you don't like real and deep art Mm -hmm. or like the art that makes you think. And so I'm like, yeah, I like that. But I also like succession or like critically acclaimed TV and movies and stuff. That that, that explanation comes from someone who's never, only comes if you're talking to someone who's never seen Doctor Who or Avatar. But there are people that have seen Doctor Who and like, are like, ha ha, like it's so bad. Like, ha ha, that you like Doctor Who. Like, Mm -hmm. Ella, it's so camp and like, it's so ridiculous and silly. And I'm like, Yes, it is, mm-hmm. but it's also really good and yeah. impactful and powerful. Like yeah. you're you're not seeing beyond the surface of like oh those comic con nerds right. and like those Marvel freaks yeah. that like only like things that the lowest common denominator like. And it's like this thing where like if you like fandom things, it's automatically assumed that you don't really like real art or like can't handle real art and I'm like the two are not mutually exclusive like there's a lot of deeply really good fantasy sci-fi animation comedy stuff Mm -hmm. but like I've hidden that part away from that part of myself away obviously not now I I will say it I'll be like the Avatar Last Airbender and Doctor Who but in the past I've in the within the industry I've been like needing my my list my nerdy list Mm -hmm. and then my like hot list like what's the cool type of weird like A24 stuff yeah like people like to be the cool type of weird where it's like I watch A24 Mm -hmm. but I'm like that's not weird everyone watches it 
Yeah. It's like what the old like the what 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 like being a Harry Potter fan used to be. Like I'm actually kind of quirky. I like Harry Potter. Mhm. And it's like everybody does. You can't handle my weird. Right. Y'all you have to understand. We have so many notes. I have six pages of notes about like episode by episode. And I, I have my four pages of general and then and then my five pages of episode by episode. And and I just I don't even I can't even tell you what we've touched. I can't even tell you what we've touched upon. Somebody tell us what to do. Someone tell us what have we just said? And <laughs> Do you agree? Do you love this show too? Because we love this show like it's our heart, mind, body, and soul. Like it's our blood. Heart, like this mind, body, and soul. Let's assign those to the elements. Heart is fire. Mind, body is water, earth. Water is mind. Because soul has to be air. Soul is air and water is mind. Body is earth. Yeah. You're grounded. Um, I... Said, you see that? Part of my notes, I said, this is my birthright. This is what it was always destined. It's like I, th- <sighs> these episodes run through my veins. It's like I, the, especially the last half of season three, it's like I've seen those episodes so many times that that I, it's like I don't even have anything to say. It's like yeah. I can, uh, the only thing I can say is like look deeply into your eyes meaningfully no, no exactly it's like this because because i was trying to it, also this is another thing while we were doing this yeah of course we were taking notes but i was really trying to keep up with notes episode by episode but it got to the point where i was like i need to clue in and i cannot i cannot take notes i need to clue in and i need to lock in and i need to watch so i went back and i like thought about episodes because i know it like the back of my hand i have written here i can name every single episode <laughs> in season three like it's the alphabet that easily um like it's the fire nation pledge right and and and, and so i just think that maybe we should look at these see what we haven't discussed and then come back with a series because y'all I'm so dead serious I cannot I do not want to put this in one episode no yeah I don't think that we can like I I think we might have to go we might have to do we might if ha- not three more episodes two more yeah if not three two and if three one has to be solely based on assigning the characters astrological but all, because also we haven't seen this is coming out the day after the live action has come out like by you we've probably seen it by the time you're by Listening yeah, to this. we've probably seen the live action and we probably have a lot of thoughts. And so, you know what? That's a good thing because that my last thing on the general thing that I did, I really didn't touch on was things I'm interested to see how they do in the live action. Should I just tell you what I said? Yeah. I want to see how they do the theme song or the opening credits. Amanda, Amanda, okay, because you know, in the first episode, they do a different one. They do, they do a slightly different one and Aang's not there when they do the swoop up because they haven't found him in the iceberg yet. And then I just want to know in general, are they going to do it every episode or are they just going to give us a title card? And I don't even know what I prefer, but I kind of feel like you shouldn't take away the theme song and it it should be very good. And then I said, physical comedy, how will they make the physical comedy translate without being too violent or cheesy? Because there's a lot of funny physical comedy where Sokka's just getting thrown somewhere, but if you were to throw a real 14-year-old boy like that, it would not wouldn't funny. be funny. He's doing a, he's like just being thrown up against a wall. He goes, he makes a funny sound and it's like, Sokka's fine. But you can't <laughs> do that in a live action. <laughs> Sokka gonna get up in two seconds. Um, same with the humor. Like the little quips that they have, I want to know if it will translate correctly or if it'll be like, that weird acting style that they've got all the kids doing now. Um, you know what I'm talking about, y'all. And then I said, because some of it, physical comedy and humor, it has to be the correct amount of camp or else it's just going to be cheesy. And then I said, why do we know who's cast as Azula and Ozai when they don't appear until season two and three? How far in the timeline will the first season go? Because it's only eight episodes and I'm very concerned they're going to speed through this too fast. But if they're if they're just in flashbacks, I do understand it. But even though we even though we didn't get them in flashbacks in season one, I do, I can see that. I can get, I can give some grace there. And then I said, will the relationships between the characters seem organic? Aang and Sokka didn't get along at first, but then they were shenanigan bros. I wrote that down. And then I said, I want to see Sokka and Katara sibling bickering correctly, and mm-hmm. I want it all to be natural. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there, we there's so many times that we looked at each other and we're like, we they argue just like us. Yes, and it's so real. Yeah, like it's realistic. It's it's actually accurate. It's so funny in the desert. What? <laughs> <laughs> After Sokka is like high off of that cactus tree. <laughs> You've been <laughs> what? No, I wrote it down. I wrote it. I wrote down exactly what she said because I was ha- like laughing so hard. This is how we interact. This is how siblings interact. This is it's literally just so real. how. What is this? Something I would say to Amber because <laughs> this is something I would. You've do. been hallucinating on cactus juice all day, and then you just lick something stuck to the side of a cave. And Sokka doesn't react at all. 
He literally doesn't care. Because he's still high. He's still high. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, I don't think it's high. He's like, your insults mean nothing to me. Right. Okay. And then, <laughs> and then just for some more structure, I say, they, oh, I, this is a bullet. Dante Bosco is an icon. We did touch on that, though. Okay. They win season one they, finale. They lose the season two finale. They lose again mid-season three with the big battle. And then they win season three finale. I said that it's so important how much they lose. Yeah. It's so important. And the way they lose. And the way they do. And the way they go in to both of their losses is with the most optimism ever. And it's like, hubris. You're not gonna make it. Hubris. It's not gonna work. Azula is there. Azula is ahead of you. Azula knows. Azula always lies. Azula, Azula always lies. lies. Azula's a bitch. Okay, sorry. We are really curious to see how they do this, honestly. Like, and bless us, whatever happens, Amber kept being like, we have the show. Whatever happens. Yes, exactly. We have the original show. Everybody, all Avatar, the last Airbender fans, come here, listen, clue in with me. For every movie or series that was adapted from a book, there is a lot of pressure on that because the only form you have of it is a book and you are excited to see how they make it visually. So everybody listen to me with this. If this show is not up to par, we still have the correct, beautiful, perfect visual adaptation of Avatar The Last Airbender. It was released in 2005 and it will never leave us. It's gonna be okay. Amen. It's the reason we get to live in a world where there has never been a movie called The Last Airbender. And with that, we're going to regroup because this rewatch had me feeling a little crazy. A little cuckoo bananas, honestly. A little. We jammed a lot of Avatar into three days. My not head even is three days. Less than three days. And my head is spinning. I want to immediately watch it again. Yeah. I want to immediately read all of the extended universe. I want to immediately dive into the novelizations. All of it. And it got me wanting to, I was like, do we need to do an Avatar rewatch podcast? Like, I know, I'm like, this is I kinda so I kind of want to go episode by episode. I've been listening to, plug, I've been listening to Who La La podcast. It's a Doctor Who podcast. It's a queer Doctor Who podcast. And I'm obsessed with it. I've been binging it, like, literally nonstop. It's the only thing I've been listening to. So Sam and Alistair, if you're listening to this, which I don't know if they are, I'm obsessed with you. I just need you to know that I wasn't lying when I slid into your DMs and I said, I'm <laughs> losing it. Like, I... She is. She's been talking about y'all. Have been talking about you and how we need to go to that Who cabaret. I'm getting off track. They do a really good job of recapping episode by episode and they get, because it's episode by episode, they get in deep to like real deep things and they can go off track because it's just one episode. Okay. And I'm like, girl, like, stop we, it we right need to there. Do that? I think that's what we need to do because there's no way in hell that this episode <laughs> made fucking sense to anyone who has not seen it. Um, I'm going to just speed run some of the highlights because do it. Um, because you, this is the you, last you, you said You said um, what you're looking forward to mm -hmm. in the uh, uh, live action. I'm just going to say a few things. Um, I said book one focusing on Aang really really being obsessed with fun like he really needs to get like slapped across the face with the reality of the situation mm -hmm. um we also we already talked about this I hate Bato of the Water Tribe I do not agree with Sokka and Katara's switch up he is 12 the Avatar State is a terrible episode I hate the Avatar State <laughs> I hate it Daniel Day Kim plays General Fogg in this and it's insane um <laughs> Avatar Day, I was so ready to say I hate it because Zuko's not in it. Zuko is literally, quite literally, in this episode, and I love it. It's, it's so funny. It's actually hilarious. Airbending so slice! <laughs> Zuko alone, I just said all caps, Zuko alone, in with, with a bunch of exclamation points. He is changing. Mm -hmm. I'm really, I, this during this watch, I was really watching Zuko change live for the first time. It was really sinking in because I take advantage of him. The Zuko I know is morally complex, with long hair, hot, and good he but the zuko i man. know was made he was not born he was made into a good man and he changed Ugh. and we watched him my first tumblr url ever i can't believe i haven't said this earlier mm. was friendly mushroom mm. and it was spelled normally it was friendly mushroom i had it 2010 friendly mushroom.tumblr.com will it ever be that again no and i'll never tell you my url mm. Sokka was tripping so hard it made me jealous 
<laughs> this is the most down bad they have ever been in the desert. In the desert. No, I want to say what the I said most for the most down bad. Here's what I said for the desert. I said, Katara can barely bend. Toph can't bend. Aang is blinded by anger. Sokka is high as hell. Momo is Momo. Appa is stolen. Aang's usually not mad. Sokka's usually not useless. And Toph is usually not actually unable to see. And Katara has to deal with all of it. And together we're Team Avatar. That's <laughs> them in the desert. <laughs> the what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Sokka is so... I said Sokka is so crazy slashing at thin air. <laughs> uh. I was waiting in at the end of Lake Lao Guy. Uh. I was waiting for J- Zuko to go, did, did you just die? die? But I forgot. I was in Ember Island Players. I said in the headband, they don't dance footloose. They- <laughs> Um, <laughs> the headband I've always said is my favorite episode I don't know if that's real I think that my favorite episodes are the last five episodes of the entire series because mm-hmm. I've seen it so many times but I just love the headband I love this is me like showing my like coming of age obsession I love a good school dance <laughs> <laughs> okay, at the in the Earth King they are so bad ass let's just remember the growth the kids in season one could never the kids in season one could never could never take the earth kingdom no they could never they were screaming their heads off trying to get into the fire nation to get the fire stages mm-hmm. oh that's another thing i want to see in live action i want to see them screaming while fighting screaming hollering. i want to see them panicking while fighting you can this do it babies you can do it just keep just be dramatic about it you're gonna do it you're gonna be okay two minutes into the earth king amber goes it was silent Two minutes into the Earth King, Amber goes, whoa, this is about to get really intense. Everything is about to go absolutely south. Absolutely south. They are so optimistic. And it's like, you have no clue that Azula is five steps ahead of you You right now. You have no clue. You have have no no idea. You have no idea. You have no idea. Azula is in the Kyoshi costume. (sighs) She's the Kyoshi warrior. Put that, put that, put that healing water away. Katara, you're going to need it in 20 minutes. Don't waste it on it. Don't put it on Zuko. Waste face. it on him. Your guard is master. down. In Sokka's master, I say Sokka is humble. I don't. In, in oh. the runaway, I say I don't see a single issue with scamming these people out of food, water, and money. Sorry, <laughs> Katara. Wait, wait, wait. Backtrack a little bit. In the um, Guru slash Crossroads of Destiny, I say in quotes, "Even you can't bend metal." <gasps> Bitch. <laughs> Bitch, I'd like to see you. Ooh. Bitch, I'd like to see you try. I said, I said, even you can't be- bend metal. The dumbest thing he could have said. Doc, Doc was like. Well, let's see, shall we? Let's just fucking see, shall we? Get chilled Toss every said, time. Okay. Get Bitch. chilled every time. Let me just. Oh! Woo! Eh! Toph, you rule! Toph is that bitch. She is the queen of self affirmation. Toph, you fucking rule. Toph, you queen. Toph is the ruler of the world. The Great Divide, I do want to know what the truth is because Aang made that story up and I'm like, what? you've lied to these people and that's fine, but what What happened? I want to know what happened. Because I kind of think that it, <laughs> I kind of have a side and I think it was the the people in brown. Oh, absolutely. I'm always with the underdog. I'm like, y'all definitely imprisoned him incorrectly. And also all their um, <laughs> insults were classes as hell. I, right. said, I was like, um, you, know, you definitely locked that man you up. You dirty, right? poor like, bitches. I was like, um. Okay. What did you say? Locked who up? The face when 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 Aang and uh, Iroh save Zuko and Katara. The face Aang makes over Katara's shoulder. <laughs> he said, "Ill." He said, "Oh my god." Okay. And I said, "Azula is tired of chasing them all." Over I'm the interested. World. It's just easier. Book three, I, my favorite season. They all look the best this season off the hair alone. Aang is not in the Avatar state the entire time, and then he shaves his head, and then they lose. I said, why is Lo and Lee hollering? Imagine this every time you enter the room. <laughs> I said, Lo and Lee, this is scary. <laughs> and Azula <laughs> took the Earth Kingdom, Kingdom and the Earth and Kingdom fell. And, and Bossing Bo Sing Say fell. Quit it. Shut up. Quit it. Quit. I said, Zuko is pissing me off and a loser and weak. Alexa, play Nobody's Perfect. Moment of silence. Young man, as soon as we get home, you're going to get the punishment of a lifetime. The beach had us in a chokehold from 2010 to 2015. The beach, like, snapped my the, neck. This is the episode where if you had previously been denying Zuko's hot appearance, you can no longer. You can't. It's giving Gossip Girl means a, a, a Avatar last night. Right it's giving it this Avatar friend group is all the friend groups that secretly hate each other. Oh, That's what I said. 
Yeah. And, and right after that, I said, I love getting to see them like this. Oh, my God. Again, I love a good coming of age, school dance, and high school party. Oh, okay. You know what? Day of the Black Sun, I got to say this. I am infuriated with how long it took for them to surrender. Okay, they should have surrendered as soon as Aang started flying back and said, the palace city is empty. Take your asses back to the submarines. They know you're here. Obviously, they know they're coming. That place is not empty. I cannot believe how many chances they had time to turn around and get into that submarine and leave, and they didn't. And that is on pride. That's on pride, but that's also on war. It happens. I know. It happens. Um, also, Matthew Underwood plays the bully in the headband from Logan from Zoe 101. For those of you who don't know, fun fact. Mm-hmm. Um, I we're gonna have to ha- talk about the headband more when we get to that episode. Um, again, I said this is my birthright. This is my own history. This is my own destiny. I mean, destiny. I said Ember Island players. This is the greatest clip show I've ever seen for any series ever, and we'll get really into that one. I don't have for that episode. any fucking notes for any of these episodes at the end because there's too much. There's too much. It's like I said, I don't even have many notes on these episodes because I know them like the back of my own hand. I'm being so serious, Amanda. When we do this rewatch, this is this is when we need to bring the laptop in here and literally watch it and pause it and fast forward. And in my it. mind, I'm envisioning that we have our setup already where it's at my apartment where we have the screen in front of us already. Mm-hmm. Um, Zo- Western Air Temple, we couldn't watch this episode because we would cringe every time so much whenever Zuko kept coming back and they kept rejecting him. Mm-hmm. Zuko acting out what he's going to say and imitating Iroh and Azula is like literally just like so good. It's mm. so in character, but it's so funny. We couldn't even w- bear to watch it. It was so cringy. I, I said, just, I hate Haru so much, it's not fair to him. He just annoys the shit out of me. I said Katara and Haru would be correct, in my opinion. <laughs> Honestly, they're both equally as annoying. I'm sorry, Katara. i really sorry. Sorry, Kat. I'm sorry. I love you. I You had to do you, what you had to do. You are a powerful being. You're Kara. powerful. You're great. I you powerful bending. Go ahead, bitch. Be icy. Be healing. Powerful knees. Great knees. Powerful brain. Great knees. Powerful, powerful brain? brain? Why the fuck would she say that to her friend? I don't know why she said that. Sleepover reference if you don't get it. Um, Boiling Rock, literally one bullet point. All caps, McJagger prison warning. Linda, stop. <laughs> That's it. What am I on? No, I, we, Firebending we, Masters, nothing, even though it's a brilliant episode. I love it. I, I have too much to say. Yeah. No, Sozin's I, comment. I, I, I combined all of the Zuko field trips when I said Zuko is doing all he can to prove his allegiance. He's never struggled with proving allegiance. He's just who he knowing who to give it to, which I said earlier. But I also want to say this, uh, because I, I missed a couple um, tidbits from the first. That Zuko that you're talking about, that Zuko, that's my Zuko. That's my Zuko. We should put that on a shirt. And it's crazy to be, because we watched Zuko become him. We watched Zuko become our Zuko, because we watched him become our Zuko. Because I'm not kidding you guys. I might have seen the whole series all the way through more than 50 times, but Western Air Temple through Sozin's coming. It's More than 300. Yeah, I was going to say it's got to be upwards 200. More. Like, I mean, it's like. <sighs> That's what I mean when I say don't play with me. Yeah. Like, don't play with me. Let's do, let's let's list all of season three in one. But first I want to say this. I want to say. um, Don't play with me. I want to say, I want to say in King of Amashu, Boomy is doing entirely too much. Chill my brother in Earth. I wrote that. <laughs> Um, Us, we can't possibly get through all this. And We're I getting said, through it. No, and I said deserter. I said deserter. After this episode, it's basically confirmed that Zhao will be defeated. He's not equipped to focus enough. Uh uh-uh. uh. Um, Sage of the Nurth. Sage of the Nurth. Sage, Sage of, of the, the Nurth. Sage of the Nurth. Part one and part two. <laughs> 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 We've been here for hours, guys. With technological difficulties We've been in here between. For hours. Okay. <laughs> Sage of the North, I said, Zuko's behavior scares Iroh. Zhao is so power driven, he's defeated. Um, Sozin could have had the same outcome, it's just that the circumstances were lined up differently. Both of them heavily remind me of each other. I have a few things to say. Okay. Had a cost for the light. Wake my uncle. Tell, Tell him, him I found, found the avatar. avatar. As well, well as, as his hiding, hiding place. place. Shut up. Shut up. It's funny that he's looking for an old man. I the safety of the crew doesn't matter. Finding the avatar is far more important than any individual safety. No, it Iconic. Isn't. I'm sorry. Iconic. Oh, I returned to Amashu. I said Azula is Regina George as a war criminal. That's Am- true. Amber. <laughs> That's true. I said, how do they survive a whole season of Aang and Katara not understanding their bending? Amber said, luck. Luck, sheer luck, and 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 gung ho attitude, and natural talent. Gung ho for the talent show is what they was. Gung ho for the talent show. Um, no, Momo, shoo, shoo. 
my dumbass thought Aang was telling the truth when he said he wasn't the Avatar when he lied and he said I knew people he knew who knew him. So did I. I literally I was so confused as a child. I was like so stupid. Mm-hmm. I was like, um, yeah, yeah, he's not the Avatar, I guess. Um, um Katara, the serpent's past. I just feel like they like some they Toph could have given her seal to someone else and been like use this and just act like you know us. And then they could have gotten more Beifong passes. Toph could have bended all of the earth in the world. I wrote to cross them over. I there. wrote like five different solutions that could have avoided the whole entirety serpent's past. And I said a lot of problems could have been avoided. This the struggle was simply for the plot. I it just, was simply, and I, I, that's why I like, hate that episode. Yeah, I'm like they the the creators just put them in this situation. Um, and I in the, in the drill when everyone else is celebrating the contact of the wall, Azula is very hesitant because she doesn't pre celebrate. She doesn't prematurely celebrate victories, which is also why I will deem I will give that she is intelligent. And She's intuitive. the one of the smartest. Wait, something you said looks like it's boiled in <laughs> oil. Amanda, we're just. I'm sorry. It's like so important. Oh, um. Lord. Oh, there is a. I can't wait. What? What episode is it? I think it's Avatar Day. Yes, it's Avatar Day. A- Avatar Day is the funniest mm-hmm. episode. Like I forgot how many funny it's moments really there are. Funny. It, it opens with. Mo with a spider web in Sokka's mouth. <laughs> Momo sticks his hand to grab the spider. <laughs> Sokka wakes up <laughs> and goes, Momo, what are you doing in my mouth? <laughs> Momo, you need to be more respectful of my boundaries. <laughs> he has no idea why his hand was in his mouth. <laughs> like, we as the audience know it's because there was a spider and that's what he's eating, but Sokka has- Sokka is at the end of his straw. He's fucking like, you know what? What the fuck, I Momo? I love Sokka. I love Sokka. Sokka has so much heart as well because he, 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 he was just looking for a fight. He was left alone in his tribe just looking for a fight and Aang appeared on their doorstep and he said, yeah, we'll help you. Come on. He tried to eat Momo upon first glance. <laughs> And becomes best friends with him. He hated Aang. <laughs> he becomes best friends with him. He, he hated, hated Zuko. Zuko. He 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 he. The first time Zuko, he saw, set sight on Zuko, he lunged for him. Now they're in a warship, being like, "My first girlfriend turned into the moon. That's rough, buddy." Sokka and Toph are a really close second to my fa- favorite characters. Yeah, it's Zuko and then Sokka and Toph for me. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, Aang and Katara. I love them. That's the thing. It's like, I don't dislike them. I just think they're less interesting as characters. I think that I can't continue to list anyone after Zuko or else I'll just like list them all because the truth is Zuko is my favorite character and I will have my phases with other ones. Like I'll watch the show like really heavily looking at one character. But along with that character, I'm still looking at Zuko. I'm pretty sure that this time it was Sokka for me. I was like noticing so much about Sokka, but I honestly was noticing so much about Aang and Katara too that I didn't notice Mm -hmm. and tracking their journeys like in a way that made it more meaningful to me. I think because I'm an adult Mm -hmm. and because at the time I was their ages. Mm -hmm. Um, But I love them all, including... Azula, May, and Ty Lee. I was say, the char- I, like, all of the including, characters. Including, like, I love them. They're such good it's and well-written characters. It's interesting to see how Azula has these wounds that she has decided to ignore. She was right, of course, but it still hurt. She doesn't give a fuck. She doesn't give one shit. Like, she was like, yeah, my, my mom thought I was evil. And you know what? She I'll was give her right. that. I'm pretty fucking evil. I decided that earlier on <laughs> as a child to she's be like, evil. She was right. It was a choice. And that's she's why she's, cause. she's Regina George as a worm criminal. She is. I think you're right. Because what teenage girl wouldn't unravel after the betrayal of her two best friends? Right. Oh, right. I wasn't even thinking that far into the movie. Yeah. And then she unravels. That's really interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm going to need to rewatch Mean Girls. Okay. We should do that. Okay, um, anyway, so we just spe- spe- we just did it. Last comment, I wonder how long Momo was in that temple alone. Me too. Because I, d- I just something like, what you been doing up here, Momo? Are you the only one here? Have you been eating bugs? Where's your family? And I, I just want to know. I want to know something that if he's the last discover. flying lemur. There's and how did they the- reproduce flying bison in Legend of Korra when Appa was the last one? He probably um, mated with something else because they look different than him. They have like eight legs instead of six or something. Yeah, they look kind of different. But what? Whatever. Whatever else is as big as that. Whatever Appa fell in love with. But it's crazy that it didn't come out of Appa, you know? Did it not? Well, unless... I think it did. They carry the babies. The ma- the males carry the babies. Like seahorses. It probably came out of something else. That's what I'm saying. It's crazy that a flying bison came out oh, of something else. Oh, that's what you're talking about. Yeah. Birth. Yeah. What did you 
think I was talking about <laughs> sperm. What are you yes, talking about? Yeah. <laughs> we can't be here anymore. Can't, we're talking about Appa sperm. <laughs> okay, this is not the number one. And after <laughs> Appa sperm, <laughs> what's a um quote that we uh, didn't say? Looking for someone. Spring, oh. summer, and fall. Winter, spring, summer, and fall. Four seasons. Oh, love for seasons for love. Do you need something? Looking for someone? <laughs> Do you need something? Oh, I can't think of any more. Um, oh, no. I already said, we're so stupid. In a landslide. <laughs> the boulder's gonna win this one. In a landslide. It's Lo and Lee. Time to hit the beach! <laughs> the Avatar's alive. Find him and, and end, end him. him. Zuko mm. here. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Zuko here. We are so cringe right now. I'd really rather the family physician look after little Zuko if you don't, don't mind. mind. I couldn't understand what she was saying for years. I said, what'd that bitch say? I don't. Know. It does, like, not matter. Yeah, no. We're in enemy territory. Those, Those are, are enemy, enemy birds. birds. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. You know what we should do? We should do, like, cringe competition. You know how people on TikTok <laughs> yes. do that thing where they're, like, yes. doing anime? We should make ourselves cringe doing Avatar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're doing it right now. <laughs> I'm trying to think of more. Everybody freestyle. Wait, no, I got one. Uh, Don't worry about them. It's, it's just you and me, me right, right now. now. That's a gross one. <laughs> I can't. I think it's so gross that they call each other sweetie. They call each other sweetie throughout this whole fucking I don't book. like it. I don't like it. I don't think it's realistic. I don't think it's natural. <laughs> I don't think it would happen. I got one. I don't hate you too. Ew! <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. <laughs> You're so beautiful when you hate the world. <laughs> <laughs> no! You're so smart. <laughs> That's a smart Stop outfit, it. Chan. It's a sharp outfit, Chan. Chan. You probably punctured the. What is it? Hull of a Fire Nation Empire <laughs> battleship, leaving, leaving them thousands to, to drown at sea. Because, because it's, it's so, so sharp. sharp. Help us. Help us. Look. This is why. Look, this show. This show. This has been. I feel like this is like as important as the One Direction episode whenever we have it. <laughs> And I'm the so, Disney Channel episode that we did a year ago. I'm really proud of us for doing that Disney Channel episode and having that as one. Um, There's millions of things that we could have talked about yeah. in, in in one whole episode from that. I'm so damn scared to even attempt a One Direction one. We have to. Um, I literally think that my head would explode. Like my head is spinning. Re- like I, I I know this is a podcast, so you guys can't hear see me, but my head is rotating on my neck right now. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I see, I'm looking at her right now. Like it's like an owl bobblehead type of thing, and I just think that it would actually combust if we started to do a One Direction episode in one sitting. Um, but that's it. I'm so happy. Like we are so excited to announce this Avatar rewatch pod. <laughs> um, thank you all for coming to the announcement. Episode. That's all we're going to be doing from now on. Yeah. Just Avatar Last Fan Airbender Girl content. Central is no it's more. It's just Avatar Last this Airbender. This is now called Avatar, Avatar the Last, Last Airbender. Airbender Rewatch Pod. Nothing fancy. I just wrote. I, don't I know, know. I'm like. I wrote I, Avatar. Okay. I, <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Like <laughs> I've been typing Avatar too. I said Avatar. But I thought you wrote my name. The Sage of the Nurse. We need to go home. We need to go home. Okay. Um, Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Um, we have a Patreon. Please become a patron. I will be uploading the rest of my Doctor Who vlogs on there. And who knows? Maybe we will start an Avatar podcast that's only on there. Oh, that's fun. And then just release like 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 Patreon like episodes, big episodes for the the live ones. Be like that, right? That's a good idea, and that's a good idea. That, this is our announcement. Okay, so the the Avatar rewatch pod will be on Patreon uh, along and with some exclu- some fun, serious, like really h- huge episodes. We'll release on to their other pod. There's pod also ones. a vlog of Amber meeting Tom Holland. Amanda on the Patreon. I literally forget that's up there. Y'all do not need to go watch. You that. need to go watch it. You don't. Um, so thank you so much. Follow us everywhere at fangirl.central. Thank you for listening. My handle is Amber L. Miller. My handle is Amanda Lane Miller Lane with a Y. And and as always, keep, keep it chaotic. chaotic.
to be metal bending. We said so much and nothing at all. 